What's up, everyone? Welcome to the latest episode of the Smoking Tire Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Sunday Lawn Care. Listen, guys, I don't know anything about gardening. Nothing at all. I don't know anything about chemicals, about plants. I just know that they look nice and I want them to be healthy. And the last thing anyone needs is another complicated and toxic lawn product. Sunday is here. It's more than a lawn care product. It's a customized lawn plan that works with nature. They take out all the guesswork, take out all the unwanted chemicals, so you can have a beautiful lawn that's better for people, pets, and the planet. You know how like they have those uh, skincare regimens where you speak with a professional and they customize it for you? This is like that for your house, right? So basically, I haven't gotten it yet in the mail, but I've filled out the thing. I went to the website, GetSunday.com slash tire and I put in my address of my new house because my old house has no lawn. My new house has a lawn. I put in the address and they use satellite imagery to estimate the square footage of my property and then the square footage of the lawn on that property versus just the house. And they got my address right. They got my square footage of my property pretty much right uh, within about 25 square feet. And they then are like, oh, well, you're in this area, so you have these types of soil and this types of, uh, of nutrients here. And here's the, uh, the regimen that you need uh, for this lawn. And here's how much you need for the lawn of your size. Pretty cool tech. I've never taken cool. care of any lawn. Ever. Me neither. So I have no idea what to do. Uh, but I imagine that once I've gone to GetSunday.com and put in my home address and done all that, they take care of the rest. So they use soil and climate data to create a tailored nutrient plan so you get all the stuff your lawn needs and nothing it doesn't. It's made with ingredients you can actually pronounce, like seaweed, iron, and molasses, so you can grow better and feel better about it. Sunday explains exactly what you get and why you're getting it. Everything's sent straight to your door right when you need it. Just attach the ready-to-use pouch to a garden hose and spray away. Don't let lawn care take up your whole day. It's going to take like 15 minutes with an average size lawn. All you got to do, let's t- let Sunday take the guesswork out of growing a greener, more beautiful lawn this spring. Visit GetSunday.com slash tire to get 20 bucks off your custom lawn plan at checkout. 20 bucks off a custom plan at GetSunday.com slash tire tire. We are also brought to you by Off the Record. Don't get caught out in the system. The system isn't there to make roads safer. The system is there to generate revenue at your expense. Should you get in trouble if you're tripling the speed limit? Maybe so, but that's not what speeding fines and other small moving violations are really about. It's about generating revenue. Offtherecord.com slash TSD is here to help. They will match you with a qualified attorney in any state in the union that will help you fight those tickets beat the system and get those points off your record. Because it's not just about the fine, right? Oh, I pled guilty, I did the thing, I'm gonna pay my $200 fine. That then goes to your insurance company, your premiums can go up for years, and it's all part of a system to extract money from you into the speeding police insurance industrial complex. They Off the record.com slash TST or code TST10 on the Off the Record app. What you do, you make the account now, you bank it, your discount is good until 2023. It's good for a really long time. That way, when you're stuck on the side of the road, like my friend David Patterson, that dude in blue, you call off the record, they're right there for you. You can stay calm and be You don't even have to show up. They just show up for you. They do everything for you. You don't do anything. You just tell them about the ticket. You snap a photo of it, upload into their thing. It's super, super easy. And then you don't ever have to think about it again. Offtherecord.com slash TST or download the app, iOS and Android, and use code TST10. The code is good for literally like two and a half more years. So Get it now, hang on to it, and then it'll be there when you need it on the side of the road with lights flashing in the rear view. Offtherecord.com slash TST or code TST10 on the Off the Record app. Last but certainly not least, we are brought to you by Tradecraft Farms, the official 
THC, CBD, smokables, edibles, and vapables provider of the Smoke and Tire podcast. This is a delightful brand made of delightful, enthusiastic folks who grow the most fabulous ganja you can ever imagine. And they have all kinds of delicious products that are made in ethical ways by very nice people. I've seen their factory. They employ lots of Angelinos uh, in their enterprises, and uh, and we support them. They support us. Just all we all you got to do. I'm not saying you got to go buy anything. Don't buy anything. Doesn't matter. Buy a thing. Don't buy a thing. Seek them out at your local dispensary if you're in a legal state. But. Tradecraft underscore farms on Instagram. Give them a follow. Give them a comment. Tell them the smoking tire sent you. Make us look good, folks. Let's keep this train rolling. Tradecraft underscore farms. We have an announcement coming soon that'll be very exciting collab product with Tradecraft Farms. As if this can't get any sillier and more fun. You know what I'm saying? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we got our friend Andrew Collins on the Smoking Tire podcast today. This fool was at Jalopnik for a very long time, peaced out, and is relaunching carbibles.com, which is a fun, irreverent take on car news projects, shit boxes of all shapes and sizes, and the car bibles themselves, which are sort of buyers, tuners, and sellers' guides, deep dives into individual enthusiast vehicles. He's a great dude. Dude. He's got nine fingers. He's here to tell us about his new project, carbibles.com. It's Andrew Collins on the Smoke Tire Podcast. Spool it up. Andrew Collins with some swatches. Dude, you know it. Stickers. Carbibles. I come bringing swag. What? Yeah, let me see your swag. Dude, here, have What's a What's the sticker. status on car? This is a really, is this like a subversive thing? <laughs> what I, do you mean? Like, am, is this supposed to be a secret? Messaging? Yeah, I'm like so. What so yeah, this? it's it, well. This is a sticker that's like the what is it? inverse of a checkered flag, maybe. Yeah. So the logo. <laughs> well, the logo was uh, is this like bent checkered flag, and the reason I wanted this particular sticker is I really like stickers, like, and I felt like this was very aesthetically pleasing. It like, is there aesthetically were, it was, pleasing. I mean, it didn't cost anything to get. Did anyone say me. nobody will know what this means? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's it's not the only sticker we're going to be selling, my friend. Don't no, you but you worry. know what? I kind of I kind of want to put these up and like make a mosaic. They're they're really good to make. You yeah. can make their own its own mosaic. Exactly. Tile, they're very you, artsy. Right. I like it. Uh, yeah. So we'll have we have like stickers that say the, what the brand is, but this is like I, I was just picturing this on the fender of my car, like. I don't know. I just like the well, look. your car, like the <laughs> Scout. I think you could, you could, you should make like a meme fender. You know, is that <laughs> what do they call it? It's, uh, what's the like name when of you that? Sticker bomb. The sticker piece bomb of it. panel. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, is that to represent your sponsors on your horsepower? No, to no. to represent a, a meme. You the, yeah. There's like there's the roll call stickers, and that's where it's like gritty trust or like oh, that's HKS. So funny. That's different. Is but the term the, roll call a standardized term? Because yeah. it's very funny. That's what I've always heard that's it called. A very good term. <laughs> Roll call. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Yeah, man. Back when you know everybody wanted to look like uh, Brian O'Connor in yeah. F and F, and yeah, of course, the Eclipse. Yeah, he put like uh, HKS in intake and all that crap. The irony <laughs> is, if you actually have an HKS intake, uh, you right never there. put the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Um, APC. No, but what do they call it? That's right. Live people. What the fuck do you call do you it mean? when you sticker bomb the fucking sticker bomb equals meme fender? Yeah. Yes, it does. I guess. I yeah. Don't know. Yeah, yeah. My fl- my dual flavored Lacroix, by the way, is pineapple strawberry. For <laughs> people, all the fucking oh, top comments, the comments are like, right there? yeah, no, they weren't. They weren't like, hey, wait, wait, what, what flavor is that? What are you drinking? <laughs> what are you drinking? We should <laughs> we should have a little smoke and tire branded water. We get on that celebrity beverage that. train. He does have sure. one. You have one already. Doesn't Ron quite. White, who is my favorite. I think Ron White might be my favorite. Tequila slanging celebrity. Who's your favorite tequila slanging celebrity? I mean, celebrity? how could I not say Dwayne the Rock Johnson? For, mm, for, is he too basic? I don't know. No, no, dude, the Rock is amazing. He is amazing. He's amazing. Yeah, yeah definitely. But, but he like, do you like? I don't even really believe that the Rock drinks tequila. Right. It, it doesn't make <laughs> I, sense. I believe he does like once a year. Like I yeah. know he posts about <laughs> drinking tequila, but like, and I I've seen his posts. I follow him on Instagram. Of course, He's a who great doesn't? follow. Oh, yeah, definitely. But I bet those pictures are fucking water, honestly. <laughs> you can't drink tequila and have muscles he like that. He hands it to an assistant, and he's like... Whereas Ron White, oh, the, I believe Ron White comedian is... comedian guy? Yes. <laughs> Ron White drinks tequila. And if you follow him on Instagram, he's fucking drunk on tequila in 90... 90- so I'm going to buy tequila from that guy. Well... <laughs> You don't did, want to buy from t- the chain smokers? Apparently, they now also oh, wow. sell tequila. Oh, wow. The chain smokers? Did you just is find a, list, a celebrity, is a list, a list of celebrity tequila? Six celebrity tequilas worth oh, trying. Oh, worth trying. Worth tr- mm-hmm. 
Michael Jordan, uh, Sincoro. I've never confused. heard of. Have you ever heard of Sincoro? Nah, I've never heard was, of that. I almost said Ciroc, but that's P Diddy's that's vodka. That's Diddy's vodka, yeah, right? Right. right. Uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson Terramana. I haven't yep. tried it, but I've heard of it. No, Casamigos, I've tried. It's good. Have you tried Pretty Casamigos? Good. I've seen George, the George that, Clooney. I, I have not drunk it. You know what's just crazy about this? I had a meeting today with our sponsor, Tradecraft Farms, uh -huh. in which we discussed if it is ethical to co cross promote car things and ganja smoking. Mm. Have you seen the the Casamigos tequila delivery <laughs> trucks that feature George <laughs> Clooney <On the> motorcycles. <laughs> and Randy Gerber? It's like uh. vintage BMW motorcycles. Probably drunk on tequila. No helmets. Straight it's up true. no helmet it's vibes. True. It looks like they're like surveying a, a field of agave. I yeah, think that's are. like the vibe they're going for. Yes. Yeah. I can't, I can't believe how like specific we all remember. This. Dude, I mean, look at the look yeah. at this. Oh, just like, straight no no helmets. No Guys, helmet, come on. If you're gonna shirt. be if you're gonna be a, a vintage R R what eight whatever BMW motorcycle. I I think it's fine to promote ganja in cars. I mean, you see, like, Budweiser, Marlboro, That was what whatever. I said. I mean... They were like, are you sure it's okay to talk about cars and weed? I was like, should we attend a race and get tickets to the Patron High Cross right. tent? exactly. And, yeah, and, exactly. And it's, it's see like, what's going on. Should we on? get high and go drive? No. no. But, like, do... People <laughs> so, have figured yeah. out how to make this yeah. this fine line situation You yeah. have the, the font of size two font that says drive responsibly. Yeah. Right. Drink responsibly. That's enough. Right, right. Only hit the new sticky sauce pen from Tradecraft Farms while podcasting. Right, of right. course. Exactly. You, I mean, you're, you're not, not while driving to do it while driving. Right. Yeah. And that's been the thing that all the alcohol companies do as well. So the, what I'm trying to say is there's going to be a smoke and tire pen coming out very soon. It's <laughs> very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> we have beaten life. Smoking tire? Fuck. It hasn't <laughs> been about weed until right now. So the f last time you were here, you had a different job. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. Now, now, Zach, is everything okay? Okay. Ignore the man in the side behind the curtain. Yeah. Uh, now it's Car Bibles. Now it's CarBibles.com, baby. What the fuck is going on? Oh, man. It's been it's been a very exciting four months. I uh, yeah, left Jalopnik uh, and got into this. So the company I work for, it's called Brookline Media, parent, uh -huh. parent company of The Drive also, as uh -huh. you may be familiar with. Uh -huh. So they bought this site, Car Bibles, and it was like a like an Amazon affiliate site. It was just like, oh, here's a bunch of car waxes you can buy. Yeah. And here's a, it was like, okay, whatever. I remember uh, this site. It made them a lot of money, apparently. Sure. But, affiliate links do that. Yeah, but they were like, well, it's kind of like slipping and Google, and this is like, we want to do something cool with it. <clears throat> so they uh, they brought me on to give it some give it some life and like give it some personality, make it a site that people actually want to come read. <laughs> is it the is it the you? Is it all the columns? No, no, no. So uh, I I got to hire I actually got to hire three contributors. They're all very cool dudes. Um, I'll get into them in a hot second. And and I have a little bit of a freelance budget to bring in. Oh, solid. Bring, bring in some new writers nice. as well. But uh, yeah, we're basically what I've been kind of pitching it internally as like owner's manual info with comic book energy. It's kind of like mm, it's like that's like the John uh, that book like how to keep your Volkswagen alive. You know yes, that book? Yes, exactly. John Mir is it John? Mir? I, uh, I don't remember the guy's name, but I know name. exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. Yes, as you can see, uh, I'm not sure if this screen is on the. It can be at the people's view, yes. but. So we've got this very like uh, what I think is a is kind of a sharp but uh, but simultaneously soft kind of vibe. Um, oh, my contributor! So this the images I can see some I can see some graphics from uh, that are familiar from the drive. Yeah, like a little oh, bit yeah. of, a little bit of the familial. Oh yeah. Well, it's built on the same yeah, like yeah. functional platform, and that's basically what we were hustling to finish oh, just man. in time for this podcast. So for the audio people, here's what really stands out to me about the Car Bible's homepage. One, the first word I see is shitbox. Any <laughs> engine, any any site that is willing to put the word shitbox in the title of an article, I'm already it's already in the bookmarks. We're good, <laughs> and especially because it's traded a shitbox Honda Civic for an X. Excellent LS, Lexus LS 400. Yep, an excellent story. Uh, so the the three main dudes that I brought on uh, this there's this dude who you just read, Chris Chris Rosales, <laughs> with his shitbox on a Civic. He's he's very plugged into the kind of tuner car like DIY world. He's, uh -huh. he's got a lot of experience there. This uh, yeah. oh my so god, I see his headshot up on carbibles.com. His headshot, he looks like every dude I see on the side of Angeles Crest Highway. He has there all the time. <laughs> he was there this morning. <laughs> if he I, there when this I morning. drive up and down, like there's eight dudes that look like him standing around a semicircle <laughs> of WRXs. Yeah, that's that guy. 
I he's trust there to that represent. guy to represent he, that. He knows that what's scene. going on. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. uh, the the illustrations, those like car drawings, are by this dude Kevin Williams, who's actually out in Ohio. Uh, but he's just got a very cool, like, artistic way of, of looking at things. He's kind of been applying his aesthetic to the site. And he's big on... I like the Jeep up on a jack. Yeah, That's it's cool, cool, right? Yeah. He's big on these, like, flip card ventures where he'll buy, like, a $500 or that Honda Dude, Tiburon. Tiburon. $600 Tiburon. I kind of always like the Tiburon, Yeah, but I don't and it's know like why. this junker... Like, you, you know, I know why. You know, you don't know why you like it? I mean, I thought it was Andrew, cool Andrew, why does he out. like it? Do you know why? Uh, it, it was... Uh, no, I don't. Because <laughs> Pin and Farina designed it. Oh, I did not oh, know it's that. It's so, actually a decent looking car. Wow. Well, it's yeah. not, it doesn't automatically make it a decent looking car, but it's got a lot of elements of edge. Ferrari 456, actually. It's yeah, pretty, okay. the second gen, the second gen Tiburon. Yeah, Pin so, and Farina designed. So he's on this like really <laughs> low budget flip grind, yeah. like really low budget, which is very cool. Can you still buy a car for under a thousand bucks in America? Yes, you can, my friend, and we're going to show you how. And then my dude, uh, Peter Nelson, who's at, you might have actually crossed paths with that him at some name point. That sounds very yeah, familiar. He's, uh, he's been reviewing cars um, for like a, for a while. Bit. Yeah, he's been around. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And uh, okay. yeah, he's got a lot of really cool like track experience. Like he's, he's got this Mazda 2 that he's got all dialed in and he's got a lot of good insight on like how to get a lot of performance for very little money. Yeah. And uh, how I to, drove yeah. a Mazda 2 that had like coilovers and good wheels and tires on it. It goes a long it, way. It was pretty good. Yeah. I w was it Mazda his? 2? Did I drive what, his? Was it blue? Blue or black? You, you might, might have, have driven black. his. I don't know if he's been like loading it out. Black, May, but uh, but it they're might, good cars. It might have been his. I don't Dude, know. Maybe a spec series with those. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. It was spec B, right? Yeah, and it wasn't a spec B car. It was. Uh, I don't know what, how heavily modified it is, but he used to work at Winding Road for a while, um, uh -huh. and so he has. He's just got a lot of that like track track based knowledge, which has been very cool to to hear about. Uh, and then of course I'll be writing hot takes as well. I like uh, the headlines. I just like good. I like what I see good. on the main on the main site. How when did you launch? How long have you been up? Uh, about two hours, two three hours. Fuck out of here! Really? <laughs> I'm not yeah. kidding. Seriously? No. Yeah. No, no, no. No. Oh, that's why it was important to do the live show. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, the uh, the site's been up though. The site has existed, existed. since like 2005. No, but like this, what I'm looking at on the screen right hours, now. Hours, <laughs> hours. Wow. But that's why we're still like like the fonts. We're gonna clean up the fonts a little bit, and there there are some tweaks to do. But uh, looks good. We uh, oh so God have even shown you the flagship product yet the car bibles uh, i like peter nelson oh, there wrote you go, an yeah. article about uh, uh spec fit yes yeah, sunday a, which, cup yeah they made that that's an event they created as a joke at grid life and now and they keep inviting me to participate in apparently it's amazing i'd really like to better yeah. steering feel than my bmw m3 well How the, fit the super <laughs> secret is these guys um uh, I believe it's called TCS, and I think it's called Total Chassis Solutions is what that is called. And these guys race a fit in AER with a K24 swap, and this thing is like as fast as an M3, like in mobs. <laughs> and I, they invited me to come race it, but I actually can't afford it. It's too expensive <laughs> to race this thing. It's so good and competitive you that I can't afford fits. to race it. They're so cool. Again. Yeah, they rule. I like them. Uh, but yeah, so st so stuff like that. This is like here's an accessible way to get. There are so many sites doing the fucking Singer 911s and you know the high end shit. It's awesome, but for a lot of us, it's like, well, it's not something I can ever gonna drive. So this is right. I I'm spoiled, and I continue and to be spoiled. But I only get to do the really really good shit when I drop a road and track business card. Right. The smoke tire business card doesn't really get me anything. That gets me like <laughs> dudes looking like your homie up there and being like, "Hey, you want to drive my Civic?" Well, it's like, but it's I don't know, man. I, Which I is like fun this. for a, to a point. Yeah, yeah. The supercar stuff is cool, but it's like I don't know. I I like the older stuff and. Dude, I don't leaner. Know. I feel you. Motor machines. Um, look what I look what I spend money on. Yeah, I don't own a car right. newer than fucking 2003. That's true. Yeah. Oh, and you want a Mitsubishi commiserate? You know my my Delica got hit. Yeah, I saw it at uh, Cars and Coffee the other day. Did uh, it's, well, still getting repaired? We haven't begun the repairs yet okay. because the real problem is getting parts. Apparently, huh. COVID has closed or mostly closed a lot of the freight coming from Canada. So I can't get a new sliding door mechanism from CCA, which is the mm. place in Canada that has all the shit. So instead, I have to get not. I'm sorry. Did I say sliding door mechanism? Mm. I meant the door. The, door. the door. Huh. In Japan, the door is six hundred dollars. Yeah. U.S. It's cheap. Seems twenty five hundred to ship. <laughs> and so my shit. estimate 
you know, the estimate yeah. that we got from Haggerty for the repairs, which was approved. And the, the person who hit my wife, no insurance, no license. But her their, her mother's insurance company took liability of it. So they're actually covering it. Okay. But the shipping charges to get the parts <laughs> yeah, upped ouch. the estimate by almost 40%. Oh. Which is, uh, you could write a whole article, and maybe I'll freelance one for you. <laughs> yeah, maybe you will. That's like, here's the downsides and the ups. I mean, there's a lot of upsides of buying a cheap JDM car. A lot. They're fun. They're neat. They're yeah. interesting. They're reliable for the most part. They're made pretty well. You know, if you don't care about driving on the right, you can get a <laughs> lot of car for your money out of Japan. Yeah. If it's not a Skyline GTR, it's going to be pretty cheap and pretty cool anyway. Huh. Um, that Delica was cheap, and it's awesome. You, you know what you, also, you might want to check out? Are you familiar with partsuk.com? No, what's that? A lot of uh, Mitsubishi parts are in the United Arab Emirates because... Uh, for whatever yes, reason, they're really popular that makes there. Sense. It might. I don't know if it would be cheaper to ship from there than <laughs> Japan because it's still really far. Habibi, we're in business. But you, pal- you spell it. Uh, is that it? Yeah. 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 Oh boy. Uh, Mitsubishi Delica sliding door. It's possible. <laughs> I get a lot of stuff from them for my truck. Uh, oh man. It takes a while to arrive, but it, it's no shit. But uh, it's good. Well, maybe not. Oh, you have know. to use for Vin. You might have to like I don't actually think it's go a general and, search query. Yeah. All right, we'll try that. Uh, but that might be worth checking out. Good recommendation. Uh, yeah. Good recommendation. Um, I'll fuck with that. But, but yeah. get, we found. I mean, there's a bunch of them in Japan. It's just the ship. Right. You know, it's a fucking right. bitch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a giant thing. It's yeah. What do you think <laughs> cheaper? Dubai versus I Japan? I don't know. I mean, it, they're both far. Du- <laughs> Japan's closer by mm. a little bit. It's probably Japan's probably with forty percent closer by fly, by air time. Yeah, but it might there, be like there different there companies ships? doing oh, it. Totally. I mean, I mean, ships coming out of Japan as well, right? Like, I even asked Sean Morris, who's like the JDM guy, yeah. and he's like, "Fucking, I don't know, bro." Huh. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope we don't have to. It, they pretty much were like, look, you know, we're still willing to pay for this. Right. But if we find like one more yeah. next thing, yeah. you know, I we're going totally to have to total it out. Yeah. Really? That'd be yeah. terrible. That would be terrible. Well, it would be, but it also wouldn't be because like if we totaled it, like we could still keep it and I could probably sell it for for a, a parts uh, oh, for a project, true. yeah, like it's like not f- that fucked. Like if you're willing to d- buy this thing, and like, and by the way, don't email me. It's not for sale right now. <laughs> but like, if somebody were willing to sit on it until COVID blows over right. and the the border opens with Canada, you know, you could save twenty five hundred bucks if hmm. if you just want to wait. Right. You know what I mean? But like. I either want I don't want to do that. Yeah. I either want a van now yeah. or or, or now. fucking you yeah, know, move so you on. Can move on a different one. Yeah. But like it's got like 45,000 kilometers and a freshly serviced powertrain that works. Yeah. But, you know, someone with a 300,000 kilometer Delica huh. would love to have my powertrain <laughs> for six grand. I wonder if there's any other one in the U.S. that's like wrecked on the other side. That, that would be crazy. I've, I've never seen one seen that, either. that's like yeah. that, but, um, you know, whatever. Yeah. But mm. Mitsubishi, want want. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but speaking of part searching, Zach, can we go back to the. Can we go back to my site for a hot second? Mm. Bam. So, Oh, sick. We were, okay. we were there the whole time. Oh, yo. we never left. Um, <laughs> but Zach keeps hitting refresh just to keep your numbers up. <laughs> yeah, I, told, I texted all my <laughs> friends. I was like, yo, go <laughs> start refreshing the hell out of my site. Program my your numbers. bots, people. <laughs> <laughs> Call the Russians. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so over on that left rail, you've got the car Bibles. We have a E46 one, so let's go to that. If like Scroll down a little bit. Maybe it's too far. Oh, yeah, okay. Back up. Sorry, sorry. Uh, where you go to view all, it should be a um, little down, a little more. Yeah, right there. Uh, we should get to the M3 because, you know, since not there it is, E46. So the Car Bible is like the flagship editorial product. Uh huh. So the Car Bible is combination buying guide and like owner's manual supplement, oh, right? Okay. So this is like, this is way beyond any like everything you want to know about or whatever post. This is like every scrap of, in, you can open that if you, if, right. if you want. I, I, I was wondering if you were building <laughs> no, something. No, no, it works. It's real, real risky. Every, the other scrap, <laughs> it's not gonna bite you. every scrap of information we could track down, hmm. uh, like, yeah, scroll on through this bad boy and you will see the level of detail is uh, very intense. It's like, 
Oh, okay. So here's the here's so the just, contents. Okay, so the here's table of contents. I'll just read off some highlights for the table of contents for the audio people. The short story, yeah. facts, fast facts, spotter's guide, rarity, check this car out if dot dot dot. That's a good category. <laughs> right? I like that one. Uh, important trim levels and options, year to year changes, general reliability and ownership costs. Well, it's a lot. And then it's I'll, a lot. <laughs> that's one through eight, and then I'll skip down yeah. to number. 20, what they're worth in 2021, where to find one for sale, what to ask a seller. Wow. I mean, it's, and there's it's, 27 fucking things on so, here. So, yeah. And then when you get to the technical stuff, it's not just like, <laughs> oh, in line six. It's like, here's the fucking oil filter you need. Yeah. Here's how much, Ooh, how many, dude. here's how many uh, liters of like this transmission. Is, pretty cool. is this takes. crowdsourced or all internal? No. Chris Rosales wrote that one. So, uh, yeah. Wow. So, I so have... what's one of these worth on the freelance? If I turn you in a Bible, what the fuck? <laughs> you want, <I'm> not... <laughs> uh, my, I pay my dudes by the month. So they're, oh, or the, I, but every two weeks. But, okay. um, but okay. yeah. So they're like, they're jamming these out. Um, so the, that's good. We're gonna keep adding like fun flourishes to these. So like right. I, we're about to release like a sticker series. So you're gonna be able to, if you like the illustration, you'll be able to buy a sticker of the M3 in any factory color the car came in. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And then at the bottom, I've got like a printout. You don't have like issues with that, do you? Huh? You don't have like issues with that, do you? I mean, it's just a picture of a car. I uh, purposefully excluded the word BMW course, and, yes, and, yes. and the emblem. It's just like a circle. Okay, cool. <laughs> I Fine. mean, it's like. No, yeah, I know. I'm uh, just looking out for you, man. Yeah, no. <laughs> I I, uh, I mean, it's just like taking a picture of it and selling a picture. Right. Is good what point. I, it's how I feel, figure. Um, but so we have this printable supplement that I wanted to give to you, Zach, because. You have one of these. I do. So the idea is you can download this bad boy. I can show it off like a QVC person. Wait, let me go to your... Oh, yeah, get to, get to my thing. There's is, your is, shot. Is it, in the, in, front of here. is it in there? Yeah. This is the paperback car Bible. I'm very proud of this. Uh, and yeah, it's just like we got the fun little picture, but it's this is all your quick reference, like, oh, engine oil weight, engine capacity. So if you're like... Let me see this guy. If That's, you're like in O'Reilly's at the... Oh, like, yeah. Oh, what this was is it? very good. It's That's cool, handy, right? Here's yeah. the type of spark plugs you use, the clutch yeah. fluid, brake fluid. Yep. Like, here's the type of battery you use. Here's the type of coolant you use. This is very good. So then on the other side, it's like... I would get this going. Even like that other shit is that your, your topics are great. I would get as many of these going as you possibly could. Right? And then, yeah. then it's like your on little the back is a, a main, maintenance record slash logbook. So you can this like, oh, fabulous. change my air filter at whatever miles and good. days. I, I have a note that's saved in my phone, of course, that's like, <clears throat> right. these are my torque specs. And these dude, are my PSI and you stuff, could sell that, very the car Bible that was just these. That's the, that's that the eventual the, Like, if you had a moleskin notebook, moleskin right. size notebook that was like this, right. but like two or three pages per car, and it was like fucking collect them all. Exactly. God, that, this is super sick. This, this is, is all great. Plot. I'm glad you like it. Yeah. This is very good. It's fun, right? Yeah. It's uh, and they're very easy to repeat. Uh, it's it's made in a fucking Google sheet. Yeah. <laughs> I built a template, and then I have my dudes fill out the. I started populating it myself, and I'm like, wait, I'm paying people to do this. I'm like, oh yeah, you don't need to be doing <laughs> why that. Why am I typing no. all this? <laughs> this is fabulous. Uh, I'm glad you like it. Really like it, because I mean, it just I, I I'm super organized with my maintenance records. I liked and like. You know how I cannot tell you how often I've fucking texted and annoyed the shit out of somebody. Be like, hey, what kind of oil is this thing? Right, again? exactly. Like, you know what I mean? Like right. people that, 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 that's all you, man. That actually get paid real money and like, leave me the fuck alone. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Just give me this garbage. Come on. You have Google too. Uh, yeah, that's great. But yeah, uh, so that's that's kind of the plan. We're, I'm going to be screwing around with like multimedia as much as possible. I made a Spotify. I was like, let's have a car Bible Spotify. And we had all these like, like started like, making playlists. Like driving music? Yeah. yeah well, yeah, yeah. it's like whatever. They're just, I, it's just like, I don't know, man. I'm trying to do a multimedia blitz here just to see what happens. Just going to throw some darts at the wall. You uh, get a few. For why sure. Not? Yeah. No, the site looks good. I good. mean, I'm, I'm about really that. Like I'm it. about that. And these are, these are very good. Very these cool. sheets. Yeah. That's a good idea. So it's going to be a combination of that kind of stuff. And then just do like, you have like total editorial control? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you, are you pretty much, how do you, are you, are you told to like stay off the drives turf in any way? No. Uh, I mean, I'm really good friends with Kyle Tromka, the EIC over there, mm -hmm. and we talk every day pretty much. Uh, the, the tack, the difference between is the drive is more of like a news, like book of record, like a New York Timesy kind of publication, whereas Car Bibles is a little more like 
fun uncle vibes what we're going for i guess if that makes sense you trying to are you trying to distinguish yourself from the rem- the remnants of jalopnik yeah it's funny you should bring that up i mean obviously a lot of people are making the jalopnik comparison i mean it's i work there we have patrick george spinelli the like we have a lot of boxes <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> uh, i mean it's just my style man it's yeah. it's what i had over there and what's what i'm bringing here so there's there's going to be some tonal similarities so there's no d- it doubt it is what it is yeah um, but you know, Jalopnik students thing. I'm still friends with some folks over there. Uh, wish, wish, wishing them all the best. Yeah, that's but, cool. That's cool. I'm, yeah, I'm excited. Good. I mean, I'm glad. How many? What's like? What's your like content flow looking like? like we're gonna we're gonna start. We have a huge batch of uh, like drafts yeah. ready to go because we uh, we kept pushing back our. There kept being like a tweak. I was like, oh, I want to change this before we launch. Let's change this. And then finally, I had to be like, I'm just I'm going on Matt's thing. Let's give me a fucking thing so I can show it off. You can change some stuff. Later <laughs> uh, yeah, too. yeah, yeah. We'll make cool. little tweaks. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna start just like throw. We're gonna get start... in the super chat if you have ideas for stories. Oh yeah, definitely. Do you have a shit box that needs dry writing about? Yes, exactly. Get on it. Yeah, we're gonna start asking people what what car bibles they want to see. We're doing. We started with. I started with like letting the writers pick, but kind of guiding them to like internet-y cars. Because I'm not going to do like the Plymouth Acclaim. No, <laughs> yeah. no. Like, you got to you got to start with the, the most popular, yeah, the most. Yeah. You know, you know, it's a great one, and you could probably, I don't want to just say copy, but it's a really <laughs> good place to start. If you've never read my friend Sean Morris, the importer, his his Skyline one. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's like so you want to buy a Skyline, right. all that. So stuff. you want to make. 400 wheel, 500 wheel, wow. 600 wheel. That's so, awesome. So you want to pass smog. So you want to do this. Like, <laughs> it's literally that. That's great. But you could, there's a, uh, for Skylines. And that's kind of like what I thought of about. With, yeah, with that. it's sort of similar. Same shit. Yeah. We're getting a little section too that's like, here are other great resources. So like mm-hmm. if we did a Skyline, we just link to him and yeah, like, yeah. check him out too. Because uh, obviously there's always going to be more. But we're treating it this. good. Yeah, we're treating it like a living document, like almost like a Wikipedia article. So, cuz inevitably I'm going to miss stuff and there's of course. Gonna, I'm just like, all right, we'll just add it. So like any any I new can't wait buying for guides some really angry f- fan to to be super offended <laughs> that you left out like he's like my right. favorite thing about the E46 is that it has a plasma coated <laughs> Spark plugs, <laughs> and you didn't write that. Yeah, it's it's inevitable. So has, we're gonna try. <laughs> has someone ever told you that or bitched at you about something you didn't mention in a car review that they very clearly already knew about? Like, of but course. you didn't mention that it has the active rear diff. It's like, well, you 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 clearly know that it has <laughs> an active rear diff. I thought they're mad. <laughs> A lot well, of they want you to say everything. They want me to tell everybody right. yeah. about the active rear diff. A lot of people read car reviews purely for validation, as of I'm course. sure you know. It's, it's like if you have that Mark VI Golf, it's like, oh, I want to read it. And like, if it, if you say anything that's like wrong, I will be so mad. Yeah, they're playing roulette. They're like, okay, I bet on this car. And then you read the review, and you're like, I hope I was right. I hope I was right. Yeah, hope, people need know, that validation. Looking for it's negative, like uh, negative review. You're like, oh fuck. I, I go the opposite way. I buy cars that everybody hates. Montero Z31. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like. <laughs> Get well. No, get well dude, cheap. No, no one's following popular. down your rabbit hole. Yeah. <laughs> no, man. The Montero is growing. That is the secret forerunner. That's right? true. Yeah. People, well, not everybody's secret anymore. It's thanks, Glucker. Yeah. <laughs> Yo. There's, uh, yeah. Everything's expensive now. I get no love on this Mitsubishi life. You too. Oh, you too. Yes. Fuck? Yes. You're Delica. No. We got Mine's you, not... Glucker, and Lynn Woodward. <clears throat> all are rocking Monteros and, uh, and promoting them. Aaron Robinson. Aaron Robinson, from, Robinson has one too. What does he think. write for? Consumer Hag- Reports. Hag- 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 Haggerty? Haggerty. Haggerty. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, it is Haggerty. It's Haggerty right now, isn't it? Yeah, no, he's like, no, no, he's no, I honestly Haggerty. couldn't remember. Haggerty. He writes for a few people, but... Yeah, yeah. he's cool. Haggerty. He's got one just like mine, actually. I think. 98? Anyway. And Thaddeus has a Pajero. Really? Yeah. In, <laughs> oh, cool. uh, in Dubai. Very cool. So, maybe he can find me a Delicador over there. Yes. He doesn't... He didn't mention when he was here that he sees Delicas in Dubai a lot. No, really. I think they're too old. Yeah. Maybe. Do people throw cars away that are like two years old, he said. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. The used car market is terrible. Oh, there he is. That's not. Aaron is well, unhappy. I I Sorry for not terror. seeing that's your hard. updated resume, Aaron. If yeah. you're out there, I apologize. <laughs> Spinelli's, Spinelli's story here about his MR2 is so funny. Yeah, it's so just yeah. like a rainy night. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I saw this orphaned MR2. I was like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna edit Spinelli at all. Why would I? I mean, who am no, I to edit the founder only a of Fool? Would edit yeah, Spinelli exactly. in writing. In writing. Right. If you don't edit Spinelli in video, fuck me. <laughs> oh my god, dude! If it's... you want. <laughs> 
I, I mean, I've been meetings with him now, like on a weekly basis, and it, it, you have to, you have to sort of start it. I'm sure he's watching this, and he's gonna give me shit later. But you have to start like 15 minutes early so he can tell you about like all these things. He's like, how his Jag still won't start, and all his this. Jag doesn't stuff. work. It's so. Uh, oh, well, he has so to stop yeah. and shave halfway through to, through doing his fucking in car. <laughs> Uh, Spinelli, it's not going to match. You got to shave. Yeah. We've, been, we've been here all day. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's it's been fun working with him. I never actually overlapped with him at Jalopnik, so it's been kind of cool. Like, No, he started in the 50s. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Hi, hi Spin. Yeah, print edition. <laughs> yeah. It was on a Heidelberg, four That's colors. <laughs> That's a pretty good he, He's listening right now. He's going, okay, okay. Yeah. Fuck, I know. fuck yeah. you, okay. Uh, That'd be I, funny. Yeah. But I feel it's very cool to be able to uh, work for somebody who I feel okay like teasing on on oh, live yeah. podcast. There's Goofy. nobody better to work for than yeah. Mike Spinelli. So I feel good about that. I think I've worked for him three times. Your jokes at him are adorable because he's worked with Harris. <laughs> and Harris yeah. is unrelenting Harris is and brutal. brutal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's and it, and when you're when you're English and giving shit to someone who's an American, I mean, it's like it, even like you, you know what I mean. There's almost like no cho- no chance. <laughs> you can't keep up with that. They've got ten different words to call you a shit. Bag. Oh yeah, yeah. They're like the Eskimos, but they have twenty ways to call you a fuckface. <laughs> so and so. God forbid we fucking borrow one of those words. It's oh, yeah. oh you're trying to be fucking British, are you? <laughs> it's like I didn't make a fake accent. I just. Oh. <laughs> All I said was tarmac. It's cracking mental. <laughs> you know, man, sometimes people are really, stop saying tarmac. Like, oh, oh excuse me. I didn't realize. Or bitumen. I think that's Australian, actually. Bitumen. The bitumen. It it's on the bitumen. It's, the bitumen. it's spelled like B-I-T. I don't know. It's how they say paved road. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I think, isn't that Australia? I think so. I think it's Australia. Yeah. It occurred to me. I had not heard that in a long time. On the bitumen. Well. So customer walking. Oh, there you go. Door. Australian phrases. Yeah, when I when I lived in Australia, I remember getting like teased relentlessly. Yeah, but they're also too. they're really mean to people they like. Uh, they told me later. <laughs> yeah, same same with England. Yeah, like the, all the, the cultures. So I was like, I was like, oh guys. I only uh, I only beat the shit out of you because I thought yeah, you were like the coolest. Exactly. I mean, I didn't but, know what else to do. Isn't that East Coast thing too though? Like yeah, talking shit, breaking definitely. balls, all that. Yeah, stuff? No, definitely. Yeah, I know. Definitely. New York. Oh, yeah. It's an, if you if you if someone from New York and someone from. Western Pennsylvania, they, they, there's there's going to be a rift. They don't understand how to talk to each other, really. Yeah, right. For sure. You know, <laughs> it's like these really nice people, and then like New Yorker, it's fucking you're like Jesus, this guy's an asshole. It's like no, no, he was having fun. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, man. That's exciting though. Yeah. I'm fucking. That's Thanks, dope. Man. Yeah, new gig. It. Yeah, new gigs. And wait, where do these other people live? Uh, so this is a fully remote operation. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, Chris and Peter are here near LA, and uh, Kevin's out in Ohio. Oh, cool. Where uh, in Ohio? Uh, Columbus? Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I By mid Ohio. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Fabulous racetrack. There you go. Unless it's raining, in which case, <laughs> fucking God help you. I've never been somewhere, somewhere so slick. Huh? Ever? I don't, I have never been on a surface other than is ice. it just super oily or something, dude? I don't know what fucking goes on there, <laughs> but you, ch- I mean, it's you weird. can't drive the speeds that you would drive down Sentinella Avenue Damn. on Mid Ohio in the think wet. It would it rain there a lot. Terif- it does. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> it's fucked up. Oh man! Oh, gotta get my gotta get my dude Kevin it's racing. Really Kevin. scary in the wet. Huh? Yeah, like Nurburgring levels. Wow. Of scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't understand that. why. Next More so than other. Racetracks, and I'm Man. not a great fucking wet driver, but it's still really scary. Hmm. Man, um, I, my yeah, I haven't been on a racetrack in a long time. It's, really? Yeah, no. It's just not in not in your purview anymore. Well, it's too expensive for me to do on my own thing, and uh, yeah, I'm not really now. It's tax deductible. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, now I'm a. Uh, I'm not, it's just not, yeah, not my purview anymore. I was doing sometimes reviewing cars for Jalopnik, but even then, it's like, I'm not doing, I'm not like a race driver, so it's like, uh. Would you rather just be telling your own uh, random, you know, stories, or would you rather be talking about other people's builds, or would you rather be, like, wrenching? Uh, probably wrenching. I'm. I. I really like tinkering and just like cruising around. Uh, oh, I got some shit. Off road stuff. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you have full use of your hand for for wrenching? Uh, kind of. Like it's, full grip. Not really. It's been. Uh, it's been a frustrating r- road. I, I feel like I was on the podcast not long after I was like healed ish. Um, I have. It wasn't that long ago. The down, the real frustrating part is I don't really have control over like the tips of the fingers, so I can. Oh, sucks. I can 
move them, but I can't really feel like where they end. Oh. So when I'm trying to grab like a bolt, oh, it's fucking that horrible. Sucks. I'll be like, I can't. I don't know where it is. I just know where it should be. So it's that's it's a pain. Yeah, yeah, no, you don't have to like guess while you're doing God, it hot sucks. Fucking things. <laughs> oh and yeah, sharp yeah, things. Yeah, it's been frustrating. I mean, it's been good okay. having like an activity to to yeah. work it. And um, I still don't don't think this is justification for how you touch me in the elevator. <laughs> Oh, I can't control the tips of my fingers. I don't know, man. <laughs> just, just. Kidding. Well, we know each other pretty well. Give me well, another so. quote about the E46. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Has, but have you seen uh, progress in that? Like, can you feel nerves connecting yeah. every now and then? And you're like, oh, you, you, you know, a new milestone. Or yeah, no? I kind of maxed out on on what I was, what I'm going to get. Pretty much. Uh -huh. It's now it's just like a matter of of keeping it moving and uh, keeping it like. Active as opposed to like, like it's real, you know it's real stiff well, in the it morning. It gives you like a fucking like bio yeah. fucking mechy arm. Like yeah. super I know, hand. like a Deus Ex or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so for uh, for for the listeners who are just like tuning in, in 2018, I rolled a UTV and my hand got caught between the roll cage and the ground. Uh, and you know, two years of work later, and about a half a on million dollars on your wedding with night or wedding, wedding day. day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> on the, the way to my wedding. The story is Whoops. insane. I mean, <laughs> yeah. really insane. It's yeah, on, I believe it's on Jalopnik, it right? Is. The, yeah, the right it story. Is. It's a it's a fucking if saga. You, if you Google Andrew Collins, yeah, there you go. <laughs> is it literally the first thing that comes, comes up if we up, Google your name? Yeah. I kind of thought that might happen, but then I was like, oh no, it did happen. Gosh yeah. dang it! Your uh, wife is a saint. Uh, she is. Yeah, yeah, she is pretty cool. That is just. That is so uh, gnarly yeah, to happen sucked, on your wedding man. day. Yeah, it was so stupid. It was like, you know, I because of course you always see in all the off road groups, I and mean, I'm like, oh, the UTV guys are such assholes, and it's like, and as one of those assholes, it's just like, I, it's very frustrating because I don't consider myself a reckless pilot. I'm really right. not. Like, I'm not a super fast like guy. You're not even interested in racetracks. Exactly. Uh, and it was just like this split second moment of like, I'll oh, just give it a little too much gas and stick the back out. And then just like that, it it's all that fucking easy. It man. is. And like, you know, yeah, I, I, you know, will forever be mad at myself for this thing I got to deal with, with the, for the rest so of my life. Crazy. But uh, it's, it sucks. So it does. Fucking yeah, I know. And there's nothing else to say. It just does suck. Yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> it's and like, it's like, that's just. That's the kind of thing that almost anybody, especially like, like an enth like a non-professional but enthusiast, yeah, could so easily in two seconds yeah. find themselves just doing exactly. Zach himself, oh, yeah. rolled a UTV. I did. So his did very first try. Really? So did Tom. So did Tom. Yeah. yeah, and Tom's yeah. a good driver and. If yeah, you have a UTV, put that fucking extended suspension yeah, shit on. Yeah, be careful. Again, yeah. window and nets. Window <laughs> put nets. some window nets in there. Yeah, uh, yeah they're ugly. The they're doors. ugly, but you, they're going to save your hand. Yeah, what was that, Zach? They make the ones with the open doors, which are also a bad idea. They're just yeah. like two bars, and they're meant to look cool, <laughs> but it means your your foot can kick the tire. Oh, yeah. And yeah. if you roll the wrong way, like your foot may go out that door. There's just yeah, a lot of things that dangerous. you need to like modify as soon as you get one the thing yeah the thing about utvs is like they're they're extremely capable i mean mm -hmm. for the money you get like insane you get yeah. trophy truck performance but it's like i don't i don't know man it's just they're really noisy and rumbly and you, it's like a jet ski you ride it for a couple hours like okay that was cool like do you know how often I'm, i browse craigslist for cheap jet skis do you really? I really i'm kind of like oh i'm <laughs> fucking bored they're super and I can, fun okay wait hold on hold oh. on just one second i have i have to answer one question okay. i apologize Listen. oh that's okay I, I will entertain you all there you go oh we're gonna talk start about to, jet start skis to comed. yeah <laughs> oh god the pressure <laughs> um yeah i think ahead. what's cool though is like yeah i mean you know you got really hurt but uh you have continued to like pursue your passion and yeah. trying to wrench and figuring out how to do that instead of just writing it off and going, <laughs> well, can't do that anymore. So yeah. that's pretty cool. Appreciate that's that, man. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I'm not a very deep person. I don't have a lot of hobbies. It's no, like if cars go away, I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, that's why I keep freaking out about like, oh, the autonomous future. I'm like, no, I don't yeah. want that to happen. You have a driving the association, bro. We're going to do it. Yeah. Okay. We're going to do it. The autonomous future is not an inevitability. Good. It's not. It's, I, 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 it's funny. I was just talking with my colleagues about this in Slack today. It's like the AV, all these AV programs are being designed by people who like bird scooter to work and get all their food delivered mm -hmm. and ha like don't. Or like afraid to be in a car at all. Or it's just, yeah, I, like the guy. I don't get it. The guy who made a Huel or whatever. You know, the <laughs> it's like it just where the people who think that eating is a waste of time and just takes away from their productivity. So they create Soylent. some so, the Soylent guy. Did mm -hmm. you listen to the dollop about the Soylent guy? No, but I bet listen it's to gross. the dollop about the Soylent guy. Okay. Uh, do you listen to the dollop? No, ever? no. It's a history that. podcast okay. that's done by a couple of comedians, but it's well researched and it's just crazy stories from history and huh. whatnot. Cool. One about the Soylent guy is 
it's a guy who fucking is not a nutritionist at all, but just like hates food and cooking and can't do either. And he's just just thinks eating is an inconvenience and is absolutely <laughs> determined to eat to like eliminate eating. And it's just it's it's like this would just be solved if someone like taught him how to cook properly. <laughs> but instead we have this gray mush he's trying to fucking force on everybody. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then all the A V stuff, I always end up being like, Well, congratulations, you invented a bus. It's like why there's just, a lot of that. Yeah. The pod. The, the re the pod. Yeah. You know I love Alyssa Walker. You know, oh, Alyssa, yeah, yeah, Alyssa Walker just smashes these fucking Yeah, she's pool. amazing. Yeah, uh, she writes for, is it LA, LA Times, I think? She and, used to work at Gizmodo. Uh, yeah. We used to be colleagues, yeah. Yeah, and um, I think it's LA Times, but the stuff that she writes, her coverage of Tesla is incredible. Yeah, she's great. Um, she shits on Elon Musk in print <laughs> daily, and it's very, oh, Elon. very good. Um, how, do you, how do you spell her name? Uh, I think with Alyssa, a w- Oh, I thought that was it. Well, you put an L. Yeah, there it is. Oh, Alyssa Walker. Junior system editor, not her. No. Lion Tamer. Whoa. <laughs> on Twitter, on Twitter, that the Twitter though, that's it. That's uh, yeah. her. Yeah, a Walker follow, in LA. Yeah, follow yeah. her on Twitter. She's fabulous. Uh, a Walker in LA. Yeah, yeah. She fucking rules. <laughs> yeah, that, the tunnel. <laughs> the first shit about the tunnels. Yes. Oh, it's dying. Oh, LA curbed. Curbed LA is what she writes for. There I'm sorry, go. not the LA Times. That's right. Curbed and New York Magazine. Yes, very she's cool. very very good. <laughs> um, that. I'm sorry I had to step out for a second. No, they were right. picking up my Mazda CX-9 press car. Oh, nice. How'd you, you gotta, like that thing? So we got the Zach and I had the Mazda three all wheel uh-huh. drive touring the it's not Ooh. a Mazda Speed because yeah, it is an but, automatic but almost, now yeah and it was very nice sweet we were like this is a fuckload of car for thirty four thousand dollars which got me thinking what is the most expensive Mazda that money can buy <laughs> good question that one that, oh, that was one. it CX nine forty nine nine ninety nine huh Mazda CX nine signature all wheel drive in whatever that beautiful red paint is soul called. red I think soul they call red yeah. yes. The white leather interior, Ooh, which that's, Zach's that's dog bold. absolutely adored. <laughs> oh, what are you doing there? <laughs> Nothing. He just got a couple dirty paw prints uh, on. He didn't yeah. do anything terrible. Zach, have you met Zach's oh, it's dog? Oh, freaking amazing. Tucker yeah, he rules. Did. Yeah, he did. And uh, that's the same Tucker. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and Hannah and I took him for a snow walk oh, uh, in the CX nine. So he got a little dirty paw prints, but oh, boy. Um, <laughs> lots of space. Nice. Very comfortable. Uh, lots of features. Heated and cooled seats. Cool. Good radar cruise control. But here's the thing. <laughs> uh, the powertrain in the CX-9 is the same as the powertrain in the Mazda, in the 3. Uh, it's working toward. pretty hard then. It's working pretty okay. hard to move, you know, 4,800 pounds, you know, plus four people in ski gear. Yeah. Um, and it, and uh, it is reasonably efficient. I got 22 miles per gallon round okay. trip to Mammoth and back. Nice. Highway. But well, uh, yeah. up a mountain, down yeah. a mountain, 8,000 feet up and back right, down. Right, that's true. It's a big climb. Yeah. It's a big climb, yeah. but also a lot of gravity on the way back. <laughs> it's it, true, it too. worked itself out. Huh. It got like it got like uh, 18, 9 on the way up the hill and 22, 23 on the way down. Yeah. Um, it's a little gutless. Hmm. And... I think they use the same steering rack as the regular Mazda 3, but with much larger SUV tires and more weight. It really feels like the exact same unit just has a lot more work to do. <laughs> Interesting. And it also feels like they might have the same brakes. Oh, boy. Because it, it really feels like it's not quite enough brakes. Hmm. Um, but for, like, rear reclining heated yeah. captain's chairs. They look nice, And, too. like, USB yeah. ports everywhere and, like, the window shades okay. and the power. Like, objectively, you get a whole lot yeah. for under 50 grand. I feel like Mazda is kind of, like, this Mazda 6 sedan I sort of felt the same way about. I'm, like, really sexy, mm-hmm. comfy, like, kind of slow. Little slow. But. Little tinny. Yeah. But, um, it, but the, I mean, they can't, if they want to be at that price point, they can't right. make it fast because then it's going to yeah. cost as much as an Audi. You if you well. just are just driving around yeah. and doing errands and whatever, like it's totally yeah. a nice thing. It's just like, are you hauling 800 pounds of people in ski gear <laughs> right. up an 8,000 foot mountain? Yeah. You know, it's not, and you want to do it at 90. <laughs> you know? I feel like they, for the money, they punch above their weight class they in do. terms of like yeah. outside appearance, inside appearance. You know, they, they do a really good job with the materials they have, kind of like Hyundai used to do back in, like, the 2010s. Yeah. You know, when Hyundai was really kind of coming into their own and, like, like this is a $26,000 Sonata, and the interior looks great. Yeah. Like white leather this and bright work When that, they like first they had the, the modern-styled yeah. Sonata. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah, no, this thing is, like, ha, wow, it's a lot of fucking car. 
space, a lot of materials, quality, all that stuff. Nice, but it's a little, yeah, it's a little bit gutless. Huh. But that's, but that's what you, that's yeah, what you get. Yeah, it's a trade off. Yeah, we. I'm sorry, people. We did not make a video with the CX-9. I'll oh. write some things on Instagram, and we're obviously talking about it now, but yeah. like eight people would watch this video, I think, and we got it really as a curiosity, and thank you to Moss. Well, you're not going to do like a canyon run in it, would you? What would be the point of that? I, I, nothing. There'd be no, there'd be no point. I mean, there'd, there'd just be no point. Yeah, I did a canyon video with the CX-5 years ago, and there was no point. There was yeah. no point like, at We're all. just wasting brake pads no. here. This is like... Right, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, will you set the brakes on fire? Yes, yeah. you will. <laughs> I said I said I set the brakes on fire in the base Tycon. Oh no, um, really? I was going pretty good though. <laughs> base Tycon's Sorry. very fast. I believe it. <laughs> it is. Um, uh, what the fuck? I wrote notes on things. What else did I want to know? Oh, Zach and I did the Angeles Forest in the Ferrari uh, 328 oh, for the shoot day, and it was fabulous. Oh, yeah. I saw your pictures. You and uh, who's cartoons on Instagram? What's his name? I can't remember. Oh, I met him in real um, life too. Steve. So Steve with the black 308. Yeah. So yeah. Steve has his black 308. He's a member over at the Motoring Club. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and that's he, what I knew he's from, an though. animator. Oh, he's nice. actually he draws cartoons like that's his gig. So cartoons. Yeah. And yeah. He's got a '78 GTB with a fucking really loud exhaust on it. It's carbureted, obviously. It shoots fire. Hell yeah. Almost every gear change, it shoots fire. <laughs> and he is not afraid to drive that car up at the red line. Very cool. A lot. Yeah, it was really interesting to drive with him. Um, <laughs> but you know, uh, my little black car is. It was very nice. Yes. It did. It did very well in the canyons. We drove it all the way out to Upper Big Tahunga for the the Yellowbird shoot. Nice. And it was uh, obviously it's no Yellowbird, but it was it was like that drive home, Zach, in the sunset. That was like a fucking movie. Oh yeah, it was. That was oh, the greatest. Man. It was the perfect time. That's the air awesome. Was cool, it was great. Yeah, I love that vibe, Ooh. man. I can picture it. And you just leave the roof at home. You're just yeah. committed to no roof. <laughs> you know, we're fucking doing it. Yep. It's the. You should look when you go downstairs. If you have never looked at the HVAC controls of an 80s Ferrari, no. there's like two big toggles and then like six knobs, and they're, <laughs> none of them are labeled. <laughs> you have no idea what any of them fucking do. <laughs> and so we kind of like try to guess our way and turn right. the heat on. To be comfy. So, have you, I mean, have you used the heater in an air-cooled Porsche ever? Or the, any of the air con uh, controls? Have I? Maybe. They make no sense. <laughs> the defroster's on a dash. Right, right, okay. And the the fresh air blower vent is on the dash, <laughs> but the air conditioning is down by the shifter, and the heat is in between the seats. They're completely <laughs> different locations. <laughs> it's so weird. <sighs> you have to really be taught. That's what it looks like. Oh, it. It's even worse in my car where the where the surround is black and it's all black leather. It looks even. It looks weirder. Mm -mm -mm. Um, that, oh boy, it takes a long time to get through these. Yeah, photos. All these but beautiful petrolicious the, pics. Yeah, someone someone shot did a nice job oh, shooting yeah. this. God, what a sweet. There, look. Oh, okay. yeah, okay. So, oh, none yeah, of it's this, pure nonsense. Oh, well, it, that one's got labels at least. So, it, colors. Well, the colors have kind of faded on mine. Yeah. <laughs> on mine. We may have to print this photo out for reference yeah. <laughs> and label mine. In, in the car Bible, we'll include a uh, for the Ferrari. That <laughs> literally like looks like a brand new car. But if, you look at, if you look at the little the, I don't know, blue and red switch on the right, so next it has these green lights. Yeah. And in Matt's car, we, like we, you can't tell. Are those sending air is that like the volume of air the speed of air and i think we figured out on the drive home actually you know 12 hours later <laughs> that the light on the left is telling you where the air is going so it's going to yeah. defrost or the the solid circle we guess Got is floor it. because why wouldn't solid circle mean floor <laughs> so and, but you have like the same controls on both sides which most cars don't you know, it's I mean, really it's, weird it's, yeah, it's really weird. weird like how do you can direct the air it has very early dual zone climate yeah. control yeah i mean yeah. they must have just been grabbing parts from wherever when they built <laughs> yeah. it and they're like oh we don't we can't like label it and there's, whatever. there's, there's, there's uh, three knobs for for fan speed yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, right four it looks like oh no that blue one's so, supposed to be air so conditioning i think the front two closest to the shifter are the air conditioning <laughs> that's the air conditioning <laughs> fan speed and the air conditioning compressor and then the two fans Below that, each one is each person's side fan, left fan, huh. right fan okay. for the dash. That's kind of nice that you have dual. Because that fan would be the kind of the same as the 911, where the air air conditioning has completely separate controls. Huh. I think. But what's weird is those little toggle things with the LED lights or whatever they are, yeah. kind of lights. Yeah. The default is completely blank, <laughs> so you don't really realize like. What is happening with those toggle <laughs> things? It's really strange. 
That's funny. I recognize those seatbelt clips from my father's uh, 79 Fiat. They're oh, they, they, the same one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's def- that is the but same. But they cost a lot more. And I yeah. think <laughs> these air conditioning controls are the same as like the Lancia <laughs> Thema yeah, or whatever the fuck, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, the in the in the Lamborghini, the air conditioning controls are the same as an Alfa Julia. Huh. They're just these shitty, shitty knobs. <laughs> Like, really, really, really shitty knobs. Like, I'd introduce myself to Steve next time. I, I got my motoring club swag on right now. Oh, yeah. Check it out. I really like that they're... they're yeah, uh, the, the I, Marlboro crib. That's what I'm going to say. What are you going to do? You, you, Marlboro's going to fucking come after you for that? I no. mean... I like that. It looks... It's very cool. Let's get back to cigarette ads. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a bummer that you can't have cigarette ads anymore. I mean, Marlboro still sponsors Ferrari, don't they? I have no idea. I'm, I haven't Zach, seen a cigarette ad in a long time. Well, no, but they've but they had they stealthily legislated. So at first they couldn't say the name. Right. Then they put like this weird barcode thing that kind of, and then it was sort of like just evocative of. I think Marlboro is still a sponsor though. Huh. I feel and, like car racing is a vice anyway. Like whatever, just just. Of Loop course, together. who cares a cigarette sponsor <laughs> yeah. a car? It's spewing exhaust yeah. in the atmosphere. Zach, is Marlboro still a sponsor of Ferrari? Couldn't we find that oh, out? Oh, there we go. Me? People ask. Here's what people ask. They still have have Ferrari secretly added uh, December 2020, oh. Tobacco Tactics. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. Wow, that's a whole Tobacco See, Tactics. Marlboro will be advertised on 20, 2019. To, is this an anti-tobacco wow. site? Or? Yeah, definitely. I'm yes, sure. it definitely is, for uh, sure. Uh, this <laughs> is like the history pro, of it. It's, to be, it's for pro-tobacco like lobbyists. It's like the thank you for smoking guys' <laughs> <Yeah>. personal website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, uh, it seems as of, as of 2020, huh. yes, they still were. Yeah, yeah, Feb. Uh, Title sponsor yeah. until 2011 Grand Prix. Yeah, I don't know. That. I, All right. Yeah, I can't say. I mean, are like, you know, racing fans typically super health conscious? I feel like not really. <laughs> so, okay, here, look. Mission, Mission Winnow, Winnow, which is written on the back of the underside of the oh, 2020 yeah. car, yeah. is the title sponsor of Ferrari. Mission Winnow has a simple goal. Quote, drive changed by constantly searching for better ways of doing things, which sounds that a instant joke? horse shit. <laughs> <laughs> Philip Morris created and owns Mission Winnow. Okay, so they just invented a new company to it's, advertise? They invented a new company so because bizarre. they cannot put Memorial Bro on the, the car. What is the point of that? Like, <laughs> Let's put this phrase that no one's ever seen on the this back. Is, you remember the barcode, right? The yeah, the barcode. Yeah, so, I mean, that, that was, that so was, weird. This is another thing like that, I think, where like the company wants to sponsor racing. And so how do they do that? You know, they use the barcode before. Huh. Uh, it, it's weird, though. If you create, like, two strange and new company name, then the advertising seems, like, lost. Right. Because people yeah. don't look at it and go, I'm going to go get me some yeah. Mission Winnow. I don't go. Yeah, exactly. Is that Winnebago? Is that an RV company? <laughs> but yeah. the name, it sounds like, it, that sounds like Lendl Global from yeah. fucking, like, to make another guy's reference. Like, <laughs> we're in everything yeah. and we'll be everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's weird. Mission fucking Winnow. That is mm. a hilarious joke. That's very funny. Have you already talked about the reinvigorating process of the Ferrari on your podcast? You probably have. Like bringing we it back. We made videos online. about it. You did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. It was a lot. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I remember following your IG and being like, "Oh man, I'm." It was a lot, like a but joke. but it's so. I a I think I don't know if it'll be financially like worth it, worth it, but it'll be worth it because. I really like driving old cars when they're really well sorted. Yep. And when they're not, it's a pain in the ass that I don't want to deal with. Totally. So I would much rather pay it forward to someone like Donnie and just go, just fucking do everything. Yeah. Because I don't want to, I don't have time to be stranded on the side of the road in this car. Right. So just whatever you see, fix it. I don't give a shit. And unless it's some crazy, crazy yeah. thing. And he did. And, you know, it wasn't cheap, but it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't that bad. Yeah. It was about what you'd pay to the same thing on a nine eleven. It wasn't horribly more than a nine eleven. Yeah. Engine didn't have to come out. The nice. whole thing with the engine in the car. Nice. And now we do trouble free miles. Well, it's kind of like, not to use more British slang, but it's like in for a penny, in for a pound. Right? I mean, if you spend a thousand yeah. bucks, like getting it, fixing one thing, and then something else breaks, you basically wasted your first spend because the car's still down. Yeah. So it's like you might as well get it all sorted Fix out. Fix it now. Yeah. Whatever you find, just do it now. And then I'm going to drive it. And so I'm going to bring it back to him in a couple of weeks. Um, and we are going to, because now that the engine is so good, yeah. I want to go the last bit. 
Because the suspension is next or new shocks, okay, yeah, new bushings, nice, um, new rear brake pads because we did fronts, okay. and I need to fix my gauge cluster because all the light bulbs are dead. Oh, okay. I have no gauges. That's it. Um, that's so not too bad. and that's and then we're fully, fully, fully done. And then I'm going to drive it like daily for like years. Nice. Which Very I'm cool. driving it daily now. It's Dude, awesome. It's like we were saying in your uh, when we took your Kuntak to Santa Barbara. It's like if these cars get used, yeah. then they work when you go to drive it. And yeah. if it sits for three years. Forget it. It's Dude, like, I drove the Countach 125 miles last weekend. Hell yeah. the best. Yeah. That car is so happy. Cars want to wanna run. They want to be used. Oh, oh, man. But you know what? I really, I, I learned a valuable lesson, which <laughs> is that with the old cars, I really have to be more diligent about checking my tire pressures yeah. because I drove it a couple weeks ago and I was like, oh, man, steering feels a little tired. I was like, I hope I don't have to have the rack rebuilt yeah. or whatever. And I brought it back here and- even though it looked fine, my front right tires were like, like the, my tires were like a 13 psi spread. Oh, geez, it was like a disaster. <laughs> and I put them back up to where they should be, and I went back out again. I was like, oh, yeah, uh, thank you. Oh, let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's remember to check the fucking tire pressure yeah. before we go out huh. of this. It was That's completely fixed. Yeah, yeah I didn't realize cool. just how sensitive it was. Hmm. I mean, that's a pretty decent spread, 13 yeah. psi. Yeah, but, no, that's yeah, but. Uh, Still, it was well, very sensitive. Yeah, I mean, it's a new car would have so many wires and electrics between the wheel and it your steering wheel. You. So yeah, you wouldn't know. Yeah, it would. It would tell me, and then would <laughs> yeah, you, and the light you would go, come on. Your tire pressure is this, and would you like a coffee? Because <laughs> the Mazda uh, was hilarious. It, oh, kept, really? it kept reminding. It kept saying that that it was time for me to take a rest, <laughs> and like, I, me and Hannah, my wife. Yeah. We could not understand what algorithm it was using to determine huh. that I needed because it couldn't be. It, there, there was no camera. There's right. no DM. No drive driver monitoring. At one point, the road got got very very nice and very sweepy, and there were no cars around. And so I was taking the the racing line, <laughs> and so it clearly was not based on what the lines if were doing, following the- swerving out of the lines. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't not based on that. And there's no DMS. I'm huh. wearing sunglasses. What could it be? Is it I just think time? it does it after time. Yeah, yeah. it was like, not a regular time interval. No, bizarre no. throttle input. I don't know. That's that's weird. I don't yeah. know. I don't just know. arbitrary. <laughs> like if you got a driver monitoring system, like okay, that's what's doing it. Yeah, and like you've seen the one in Mercedes, the cup of coffee. Yep. Have you seen that? Yep. The cup of coffee is yep. hilarious. Yeah. It's like yeah, hey, like, like you need a rest. I'm like, <laughs> do I? I just got up. Passive aggressive car. All yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> you look tired. Oh man. Oh my uh, god. Spinelli's in the chat now. And oh so no. Is oh god. No. So is Chris Morales. Oh, good. oh, thank you for spin. I, the only comment that matters. The four color Heidelberg joke was gold. Thank you for understanding that joke. Spinelli and two other people <laughs> understand a fucking. That line is like spoken by someone not even credited in the movie Catch Me If You Can. That's how fucking stupid and nerdy I am. <laughs> Heidelberg, Ooh, full Jeff colors. Keenan, is that a Titanium 300 ZX key? Yes, it is. Good eye. Your key rules. Oh, yeah. So the, as you may recall, the, the Z32, the later 300 ZX had a Titanium key like mm-hmm. this. This company called Ronin Imports, uh, no affiliation, makes it for, uh, oh, so they'll send light. you a blank one. So light. Yeah, it's really cool. Will a regular locksmith cut titanium? It took me a long time to find out somebody who would cut it, but uh, <laughs> but I did find somebody. Uh, I know Venice. one guy. He's yeah, off the grid. No, this is fucking awesome. I went to like four guys, and they're like, no, I'm not cutting that. And not of course, the blank that, was like- illegal. Are you crazy? Yeah, the blank was like 70 bucks. So yeah. Like, again, a sick the, key. Uh, yeah, but but Ronin Imports will cut it for you now. So oh, okay. if you send them your ignition code, they will. Um, yeah, it was it was cool. They were that good rules. to do. It. I liked when I had a Skyline. It had the best. It had a really. It wasn't titanium, but it was a very cool like cool shape. I key. love sh- I love upgrading the touch points. Mm-hmm. I just got this really nice like hundred fifty dollar Nardi shift knob yes. in my one hundred dollar Z. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and every time I go, I'm like, oh yeah. Back in the day in high school, I put a, I had a Subaru Legacy yeah. GT. That picture of it's in the elevator. Nice. And I put a Hearst T handle yeah. on it because I was 16. And that's, <laughs> Why what, not? that's what you do. And as long as it wasn't in the sun for too long, because right. then it would fucking burn Hearst yeah. backwards yeah. into your palm. <laughs> Other than that, the SC1000 it was, knob does. Yeah, it I got to figure that one out. I need to put a little sock on mine or something. Yeah, you know what I did with the Hearst one, actually? Because I was a white kid from Greenwich, Connecticut. Yeah. Putter cover. Oh, God. Of course, you it's did. all about. So Actually, it's ping. Perfect. Yeah, when in yeah. when I parked it, it said ping, and then when I was driving, it said Hearst. <laughs> Shoot, I gotta, I gotta get like a blue putter cover for mine. Yeah, yeah. 
I may have an extra for you. Oh, nice. Perfect. I think I know. Is it? A, it's not a T handle. No, shape. no, no, no. Well, it's, that, a, it's a round. It's just knob. a normal, like, yeah, pretty standard looking. Get a driver cover. Oh yeah. It's like a big sock. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah. It someone's. Someone must make one of these. Probably. Who, who yeah. makes like the dope neoprene? You know, really nice yeah. cover. Well, because like Civic Type R also has that aluminum, or maybe it's titanium. I think actually. titanium. Yeah. Yeah. Might be titanium. But it hurts yeah. when it's in the sun all day. Yeah. I know that Cooks, much, man. You can change the weight of your of how your shifter feels. Yeah. By the way, if you change the weight of that knob, yeah. you don't really. Th it's not something most people think about. But if you change that knob substantially, it could really fucking change the shift. Definitely, for better or worse. So yeah. that's another thing that people should like actually re research before they just throw a shift. Biggest <laughs> one of the biggest mistakes that I see in. A lot of cars that are modified is they when they make not just a short throw shifter, but then they cut it down. Yeah. So if you've got a short throw shifter that's also physically short, yeah, it's gonna be so much work to get that thing, and you're actually gonna lose accuracy huh. versus a taller one where it'll still be pretty tight and direct, but you, but having a little more room to work, it'll actually be better for you. Yeah. That's a mistake I see sometimes. Fair enough. I mean, yeah. I suppose it's not a mistake, it's subjective, well, but I think that yeah. people are making their lives harder than they need to. <laughs> That's all. Well, there's different tiers of like modifying your car, right? There's like you first get it and you just throw parts at it and whatever, and then you, as you mature, you learn these things. You kind of work backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. The ones I see that are good, like uh, BMW guys do it. There's a short throw shift kit, but then they got a real tall shifter on mm -hmm. it. So huh. it's uh, it, it's right up next to the wheel. Oh, cool. So it's just... Uh, uh, it's <laughs> Full on rally style. Really close to the that's wheel, badass. and it's like, oh, that's fucking beautiful. <laughs> very, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, definitely. That shit is dope. Yeah, I, I see those, I'm like, hmm. That's very uh, good. Yeah. It's very good. It looks like an e-brake handle, but it's just... Oh, yeah, I see. Cool. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, your E46 is pretty stock, though, right? It's Yeah. Yeah. It's Except for the Vredestein tires. Oh. Vredestein tires, Turner cooling shit, and subframe reinforcement. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, yeah of course. The classic subframe The repair. things that keep it going, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. Reliability mods, as they say. A oh, good yeah. car. I love that phrase. <laughs> That's a good car, that thing. <laughs> I love what... Yeah, no, they're amazing. Uh, I love when you need, like, a car has... Like, RX-7 is famous for this. It's like, there's mods that if you don't do them, the car will just melt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I went to meet this dude, E92 M3, the rod bearings. is like, yeah. is your car going to eat itself? Your oh, car God. will it eat itself? Itself? Oh, mine won't eat itself. Okay, cool. <laughs> I know. Good. Uh, IMS bearing in the 911s. Right, 11s. right. 996, the, yeah. The deal breaker mods. Yeah. The anti fire mods. That's the first Head mod. gasket and a Ford Focus RS. Oh, God. My Are car they got that the bad? wrong. They all. They got the wrong ones. They put the wrong <laughs> head gasket. It's not are they bad or not. It's, it's just did your car wrong. was your car by a sh stroke of luck? Uh. Did it like bleed through the one or not? And mine didn't because. Uh, Either because I was very lucky, or because I have a very high level of mechanical sympathy. Oh right, and I didn't beat the shit out of my it. car yeah. enough to blow it. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. But I did get the wrong one. <laughs> God. It was uh, the Lincoln one. Oh jeez. The Lincoln MKC, <laughs> which so is the, bizarre. which apparently looks, you know, all it was like literally yeah. like someone grabbed the wrong box, and I a mean, couple hundred cars got. The yeah. Well, you've been to car factories. You've seen how it's like. I mean, there's oh, so yeah. much flying around. Like I could see how shocking one, any of this one shit would, gets made. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, when, but seriously. <laughs> well, when I went to uh, the Porsche one in Leipzig recently, uh, I guess it was like two years ago at this point. Right. But but they they had a lot of the um, autonomous. I don't know if they're autonomous is the right word or if they're programmed robots right. that interact. You know, that fucking bring shit down. They're completely like you know free of people. Wow. That's kind of cool. Yeah. It's like nice to see that. that yeah. That's very smart. Yeah, the but Germans I don't know how are, anything uh, gets made. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> but yeah. what are you uh what are you most looking forward to about starting this shit from the ground Ooh, up? So I am actually I'm most looking forward to like seeing which of my multimedia experiments lands and like what it, what people end up you know liking uh, and and I've been really enjoying kind of coaching some new writers. Yeah, it's it's a different it's a totally different job than writing myself. And it was really interesting from going from like being on the grind and writing to having to think more like strategically and y y managing people that you've never met in real life is kind of an interesting situation where it's like, dude, sit down with my wife, right? <laughs> She's going through that. It's, yeah. it's weird. How what is your experience? Well, it's like, like be, because 
especially editing things like if i'm editing like you know a handful of posts in a day i i just want to like uh, x out write all caps this is wrong this bad this is okay and it's but you don't want to be an asshole because <laughs> mm. it's like these guys don't really know me yeah i mean they kind of do now but uh so you got to manage the, like figure out how to convey information in a way that's productive but yeah. also expedient because like you know, I have 50 posts to edit. It's like I can't spend all day doing the back and forth conversational piece at the yeah. beginning and end. Um, but every time people ask me, <laughs> like, oh, how's it been, like, moving from one job to the other, I think of that. Do you remember that that scene in The Office where Creed Bratton is like, oh, I've been in a cult as both a leader and a follower. Yeah. Like, it's like, you make more money as a leader, but you have more fun as a follower. I'm like, that's pretty much, a, that's pretty much what, like, writing for to owning a car uh-huh. blog. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's very funny, but uh, but yeah, all the the dudes I hired, I got lucky. I mean, they're all they're all vibing together. We, That's cool. They're all like really into. Never met in person. No, never. Do you know how tall any of them are? Uh, no, I don't really. <laughs> That's what the first thing my wife put it out after about a month. <laughs> after about a month, you know, she started at Twitter completely virtually. Yeah, never meeting anybody. Yeah, onboarded virtually the whole thing yeah. from our house. And she, a month in, she goes, I have no idea how tall any of these people That's are. That's really funny. That has not occurred and to me. And then she fucking went to have coffee with one of the dudes. He was like six foot seven. <laughs> really fucked She's her like, up. Oh. I was like, wait a minute. Is everyone a giant? Am I? Am I he always only, just aims his camera too high. Am I high the only normal sized person? <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. No, I, I had not thought about that. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, just for the COVID thing, I'm not trying to like travel and stuff, but... Yeah, it would be cool to meet. And I don't want to meet just two of them and not have met my Ohio dudes. So I'm like, oh, I got to Well, you, have, you should go to Mid-Ohio. That's right. a good reason. Yeah, you're right. That's a good very point. good reason. Yeah. Totally. Um, we got a lot of questions from people. So Ooh, we did? stop. Yeah, we Question did, right? Question time. Do we have a bunch? Got about two pages, yeah. Yeah, we got a bunch. So don't oh, send cool. in no more. Don't send in no more. You can send in the money only, but no other questions. Oh, nice. <laughs> ah. Who we got? What do we got? Seth Simpson. Do you want to read them, please? Uh, sure. Why not? I didn't mean that condescendingly. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> give, me a, give me a break. I've got some Tradecraft Farm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go for it. Seth Simpson says, I have an obsession with driving slow cars fast. Cool. You should come to carbibles.com. Uh, I currently own a Fiesta ST, nice, and a 2-liter 1LE Camaro. Oh, you bought the 2-liter Oh, I didn't LE. know they made that. They That's did. Interesting. It, was, it, was, uh, it handles, it handles well. really good. I bet. Is there another unique slow car fast experience that I'm missing, or am I waiting for the Yaris GR? Uh, the Fiesta ST is the best one. Mm-hmm. Okay. The Yaris GR certainly seems very promising. Oh, definitely. I mean, if you well, have you assume... experienced a Miata, then right, that's I mean, sort of a classic. Yeah. Then you should. But the Camaro will smoke it on a track. I mean, also, like, how old do you want to go? Right. We're talking about new cars because if you want to go like old, like, there's not a lot of things more satisfying than an air cooled 911, which is not very fast. They, they are popular but very, for a reason. Yeah, because yeah. they're fun. They're mm-hmm. a really good time. Um, and. Uh, Additionally, are you willing to go with the JDM? Because if so, the Nissan Pulsar GTI R it becomes available. Or if you go Euro, like Peugeot 206, and some some importable cool. importable things. Yeah, Very true. Cool. Launch a Delta Integrale. Uh, oh well, you get a little more money. Just uh, saying. Yeah. All right, Caleb. Oh, I got one for me anyway. <laughs> Caleb Howard, <laughs> Andrew, what made you finally leave the sinking ship SS Jalabnik? Ooh, that's uh, it's a slightly loaded question, but uh, it was less honestly. It was less about leaving Jalabnik and taking this opportunity. Uh, Patrick called me up and asked me to apply for this EIC job, and I mean the the comp was significantly better straight away. So that was like, all right, that that, that was you know. Definitely had me intrigued. But, of course, when I first saw Car Bibles, the site looked like shit. So I was like, uh, I don't know, man. Like, I don't, I don't want to, you know, move from this amazing personality website to, like, writing Amazon affiliate posts. And he was like, no, no, no. Like, the whole reason we're bringing you in is to, like, do not that. I like that Andrews gives people freedom. Yeah. You know, he doesn't. I, I, I've hung oh, out. Perlman, I've hung, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I've hung out with him a couple of times, and he doesn't seem like a controlling editorial type of person. No. The uh, well, that was that was another reason. I mean, it's kind of an it's kind of an open secret that like the corporate management of Geo Media that owns Jalabnik is like very challenging to work with. Yeah. Uh, from an editorial perspective, and I was definitely frustrated with that. And the yeah, the guys. That, so North Equity is the is the VC that owns where we at, where I'm at now. But those guys. In all my conversations with them, really want to build like a cool website and like build cool stuff, uh, which I didn't feel at the last place I worked. So yeah. I was like, "All right, like so those building a good website and building cool stuff is enough." That's why I'm here, piece. man. Yeah. I mean, I'm. I mean, I like making money, obviously, but I'm. I'm here to make the blogs. Yeah. Like, 
That's that's what gets gets me up in the morning. So How about it. Yeah. Uh, Richard H. Most fun four door Porsche for eighty thousand dollars. Rear wheel drive Taycan or Macan GTS. Hmm. Realistically, you're not getting that rear drive Taycan for eighty k. Right. That's the that's the put it in the press release price. Yeah. Out sense. the door, those cars are going to be ninety to ninety five with any kind of anything. Um, if you want to talk about that car versus a Macan, I think the EVs are more fun than a Macan. Interesting. Macans are great. Nothing wrong with a Macan. Macan GTS is pretty cool. It's but lovely. Yeah. You ever drive a fast EV though? Porsche. Uh, mm. Well, Teslas, but not a Porsche. No. Taycans. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Next not level, huh? and not just because it's. I mean, electric is electric, right? You yeah. know what that's like. Yeah. But the whole passenger cockpit is sunk down between the wheels like a Cayman. Huh. So it's much more like a Cayman. Than it is like a Panamera. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's a great descriptor. Yeah, okay. It's a lot like a. It's a lot like a heavy Cayman, but it's heavy okay. down low. I'm it's much very, more interested very... just based on that sentence. Yeah, in the especially car. the rear wheel drive okay. one. The rear wheel right. drive one's a shit. But I don't think you're going to get it for 80k. That's the point. Okay, fair. Ryukachu says uh, make a car bible article on the emerging EV shitbox market. Yes, it's funny you should mention that because we are working on stuff like that. Um, yeah, the dude Kevin I was talking about is into like. He's been looking into, okay, so what do you get when you buy like a $6,000 leaf now? Like, is that, yeah. is it like useless? Can it only go like 10 miles? They have reduced range, yes. Yeah, and the, like, the reality like is 30, 40 miles. Yeah, yeah. but there's like, there's, it's really hard to go to like a Craigslist buy and, and tell if it's good is yeah. the problem. It's like, you know, if you go, if you go to answer a Craigslist side and look at a used car, you can kind of tell if it's a piece of shit or if it's decent. With an EV, it's really, Hard to like test it properly and uh -huh. like, so it is. It, we are going to be looking into like the key how is do you that, do that. <laughs> you should do what I did with the fucking motorcycle in the lobby downstairs. The, I was like, if you can, if you make it here, I'll oh, buy yeah. it. <laughs> so look at Craigslist, like forty yeah, miles from your right. house. If you're like, that's all right, idea. if you make it, that's perfect. If you make yeah. it here, I'll buy it. Set, yeah. set a, like a, a rally for it to yeah. complete. And they, have yeah. an, and they have an hour, so you know they don't stop to charge. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Forty-five minutes. You to must be here. do this TSD. <laughs> <laughs> they show up that dragging a would generator. Be funny. Yes, it if would. you got if you had a spec leaf, like <laughs> spec used EV TSD that was like fifty one miles long. Oh my god, right. They all have to get like <laughs> and they're just like dying on inch. the side of the road. <laughs> But it's also you got to deal with like different uh, flavors of ch what am I saying flavors different sizes of charging uh, right plugs yeah like they're not all the same. I think so. most of them except Tesla are will accept the kind of universal plug like I've got outside here. Okay, gotcha. Pretty That's much. Good. That's good. And then some of them have the the like the Tycon has the universal plug, but then with an extra little flap thing for the super fast DC joint. That uh, but okay. it's like. Got it. But it, they, it's the same shit, whereas okay. Tesla has its own Right, Tesla's the plug. Got it, got it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. But yeah, that'll be an interesting world, the cheap EV world. Is right. They need like a an OBD2 tester of some kind where you can right. test the battery's capacity and yeah. how, you know, how good it is, and you just plug it in and look at it real yeah. quick. That'll but be, I, but, that'll be but cool. Teslas don't even have OBD2 ports. Not all of them. Some of them do, but mm. uh, I don't think they do. A couple of them. Oh, if somebody's wow. in the chat, well, you can't answer the question anymore. But uh, I don't oh, think every Tesla point. does. I guess you wouldn't need to plug it into anything, do you? Well, Ever. I mean, it doesn't need well, to get smogged. In theory. Yeah, no. Yeah. There's got to be some kind of a hard port. One, it can't well, yeah, be there, totally. There has you know, to be some diagnostic port. It might port. be like a USB or it something. It might be proprietary, RCA cables too. Yeah. just underneath yeah. it somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yellow, red, white. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a Nintendo cartridge. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Paul Velichikov says, uh, how big is the garage and driveway at my new house? Uh, my my garage is a three-car garage, nice. divided two, one, but actually, I'm going to be turning the two into a gym. Oh, wow. And the, so it's going to be one of those, okay. like, not CrossFit, because I don't do CrossFit, yeah, but you know doors, how the, yeah, you so know how the, can see your muscles. <laughs> you can't really see it. It's kind of it's on the side, but like, but uh, the garage door is plexiglass. Yeah. <laughs> but get this, we just learned about a thing. You can open the garage door and then have a garage door screen come oh, down. I've never seen that. Like before. it's on a rail, like huh. another garage door, but it just broop, yeah, like a so, bug screen. Yeah, yeah. So huh. you can have like, so I can have the cats like come oh, in for animals. Yeah, yeah and so good. because it's two one, I'm putting a glass wall separating the gym from the one. Okay. So I'll have I can have one car at home in the garage. Okay. And, and then, then we could park like three cars in the driveway front. probably. Are you yeah. going to keep most of your stuff here then? Yeah. Yeah. It's close by. We are, my new house is near here. No, so right, cool. it's uh, so yeah, it stays here. Nice. Imagine. 
imagine going through all this trouble. <laughs> you know, my fucking father told me, bless his old heart. My dad said, because I told him we're full, basically. Yeah. Like, dad, we're full. He goes, well, you better get your cars out of there and, and get them, you know, stash them at your new house. You could sell those spots. I go, dad, do you, do you think I want to... Four years ago, I was like, I don't have anywhere to keep my shit. I better build this ginormous thing <laughs> only to have it be full and be like back where I don't back where I was like, like capitalism myself out of yeah. solving the problem I wanted to solve. Right. No, that's I like that. Yeah, they say. Here. Uh, uh, well, that's because you appreciate the art of, of your business. Because I man. needed a place to park my cars. <laughs> that's how this whole fucking shit show started. Yeah, why shouldn't you enjoy it? Is this guy, this is this guy's name? Charlie, oh, it's Charlie Four? Yeah. Charlie Four. Charlie Four. Wow. Uh, from the Charlie UK. Charlie IV, because he deals in, or you know. Charlie IV. He steals IVs off the truck, <laughs> sells them to people. Charlie Are IV. Are you Charles the Fourth? No, it's Charlie, Charlie IV. Charlie IV. Charlie IV. 50 pounds sterling. Is that what he does? I got you, Saline. Yeah. Uh, oh, I've been listening to the podcast for years, he says, but I've never heard you guys talk about Chris, Chris Banning and the Mulholland 911 uh, legendary uh, street racing history. Is the guy still around? He is, actually. That guy is around. Wasn't it Spinelli that just wrote that story? Like, there was literally a story written about him. You're right. We have not specifically talked about this dude and his Porsche. Do you know who this guy is? Andrew? No, no. So back in the day, one of one. Yeah, sorry. that's it. The Renless Post. So this guy, I think, bought some kind of crazy uh, RSR Porsche body, put it on, you know, combined it. Oh, what you'd shit. call Look a bitsa. That. It's a it's a bunch of bits of different things. Huh. But you'll notice that see the pizza. roof is actually <laughs> chopped. Uh, I don't know. Go back. It's, Where, the, oh, it's, the yeah. roof is chopped a couple inches, and it's a slant, a slanted windshield, huh. so it's more aerodynamic. And it was sort of this wide body turbo, huge turbo. Whoa, it had like slicks. So see, it's got like a speedster windshield, yeah. but then with an actual roof on it. And it was very light uh, and <laughs> very full cage. very Damn. fast and a full cage. And like back when these dudes used to race, you know, street race hard yep. on. Uh, it, has a, it had a twin plug motor. That's a fairly recent photograph of it. Um, <laughs> this guy was like the fastest guy on on Mulholland. Hot damn! Um, it, it even kind of looks like the car from uh, the King of the Mountain movie, that, yeah. like old street racing. Yeah, movie. pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just a it's a silver like it looks like a a turbo Carrera kind of thing, yeah. but with wider real. Uh, wider turbo rear arches and like chrome Fuchs. That's interesting. Yeah, widen widen Fuchs. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and some and. Yeah, so that's huh. it. It's a guy who used to fucking wow. build okay. this crazy car, and it was the fastest car on the street back in the day. So Very cool. We have not talked about it, but there, there if, it you, if you're interested, there's a lot, a bunch of different people for a bunch of different outlets have done uh, some deep dives. And as far as I know, he is alive still, <laughs> and the car is around. Uh, local, I, I, if, I, it's, it's around somewhere. Cool. Uh, what else is Zach? What? Uh, Brandon 4.9 says, what 90s domestic cars do you feel will grow in value aside from the obvious choices? Uh, oh. GMT 400 trucks, <laughs> Chevy trucks, for sure. Two-door Tahoes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the mm -hmm. Yukon GT. Yeah, the, the Yukon GT. That's what it, yeah, I was trying yeah. to remember. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and pickups. Uh, Tacomas will just continue going yeah. to the moon. <laughs> well, they're not domestic. Oh, I yeah. guess they're built no, in. Sorry. Really built nice, in tech like that. classic looking, like those and, like the 96 Ford trucks, when they mm. still looked the, like the old one yeah. before they made them round. Oh, they yes, still had they say, uh, yeah. DSMs, because I will. Oh, yeah. I will plug. Uh, you said domestic. Eagle. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Clapman. The Eagle Touché. Talon. Eagle Touché. Talon. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think what, like, domestic cars. Like, uh, what else? What am I missing? What do Cadillacs Bro, look like from there? <laughs> no. Nothing worth. Not that good. you just said Katera. it. Cadillac maybe, Elante. Maybe the Elante. Maybe. I mean, maybe the Buick Riata. Didn't some rich guy just get one of those? Probably. Was, yeah. Oh, Michael Hartley. Do you know him? He's yeah. a, he reviews cars. Yeah. He, he, he just like an Instagrammed about an Elante. I, <laughs> he even was like, yeah, this is like a goofy car, but I like it. It was like, all right, sure. Cool. Also, Pininfarina design. Oh, really? They did the all Elante. Right. Yeah. All right, cool. And they were built by some coach builder, too. Really? They were not. The Elante story is crazy. Okay, I so think they those cars may have yeah. been shipped across the Atlantic Ocean twice. 
<laughs> I'm I'm not. I think they were partially built in Detroit, shipped to fucking Europe to be coach built and sent back. Oh jeez. I seriously <laughs> think they were shipped twice. That Someone might like call good, me out if I'm wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure I've read the Alante story before. <laughs> <laughs> that is the kind of weird shit I'd like to read. There you go. Yeah, they're. It's like kind of cool looking. Uh, they weren't bad looking. No, no. I think it actually. I mean, look. If you cover up it, the yeah. grill, there's a, it. It's not entirely different from a R129 Mercedes yeah, SL. Yeah, true. Yeah. You know, if you put a different grill on it, especially the, the later ones that got a little more rounded, they were not bad. Some of them wheels are cool. I like the big dish wheels. <laughs> <laughs> Better than the Riata, for right. sure. Yes, agreed. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. All right, what else we got? Uh, but I think the body-on-frame SUVs and the trucks. Yeah, you're right, you're yeah right. man. People yeah. freaking love them. And those Chevys look really good. Uh, uh, a very clean Lexus LX470 just sold on Doug's site for $62,000. Oh, I saw that. Man, oh. I mean, mint. Mint. What, so what what, I, what cracks me up about those is like the whole reason those and Land Cruisers are valuable is because they can go these like insane miles. But it's like, uh, so why do you need to get a, a low mileage? One? Well, <laughs> right. get one that's, that's what got if they want to? But what if they want to experience what that yeah, was like yeah. from new? Oh, that's right. Because you you were telling me about this how like those first thirty thousand miles is like they're good you feel it it is they're different good. that's yeah. fair that's fair that real fresh new yeah. feeling okay if you if you really want to experience that there's Got really it. no actual substitute for okay. it. All right, that's fine. And that's some fair. people are, you know, if you got the it coin, su- it yeah. sucks. But there's people yeah. that just have don't give a fuck money. Clearly, you know, and it, to get where are you going to find another one of those? Right, that's sort of that. true. It's like you could get a new one, but if you want an old yeah. one, then you so know. be it. Who am I, I there, to? It's, there are definitely collectors who will buy low mileage shit to stick it away. Right, but there are fortunately. There's a pretty decent cross section of people that buy that shit and then they start driving it. Nice. Which uh, here. Spike is one of them. Oh, really? Spike likes to buy really low mileage stuff and then just start Use driving it. it. You know, he's got a bunch of cars, so there's only so much he can drive right. each car. But he's still, it's not <laughs> yeah. like he he sweats it. Yeah. But he That's really, good. and he was the one who really showed me the difference between low the, mileage, re- the yeah. restored versus the actual low mileage. Got it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's um, fair. That's so, so man. Tr- uh, Trent, on behalf of the Vape Boys, <laughs> would like to request a WRX buy. Oh, you better believe we're doing a that's WRX. That's got to be oh, my already God. in the pipeline. That's, I mean, that's already in progress. You yeah. must have at least 15 or 20 already in the pipeline. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We got, uh, so we've got like six published already. Uh, they're all, yeah, RX-8, uh, MR2 Spider, just like. Yeah, uh, and 240SX is coming, WRX is coming, uh, Fiesta ST is coming. Oh, a lot of stuff is in the pipeline. Yes, it's too bad that it's probably not worth your time to do like some of the more random ones. Like, yeah, because like a DeLorean one would right. be really fun. Right, and like just some other kind of. You well, know. it's gonna depend on. I mean, it's because what really pays the bills is the traffic, right? So if. If a lot of people are going to click on a DeLorean one, then shit, we'll ride a DeLorean one. I mean, it's... There's a lot. Yeah. It, but... It would be fun, but I don't know. It's yeah. a limited... It's, it's <laughs> yeah. Niche I mean, I don't know. Maybe people will just like like reading them. Who knows? But... Uh, I would read... I'd read them just to read them yeah, once, some, some but of, I, right, think, yeah, I think they're... Yeah. They would live on successfully as a resource. Yeah. That's kind yeah. of the... Yeah. So we'll probably stay away from the real wacky stuff, but I don't know. We'll see. It's, hard, it's, it's, it's the same thing with any content. You know, on-demand yeah. content. It yeah. sucks. You, if imagine some of your favorite television shows were exclusively on demand episodic. It's so true. You know what I mean? Like, well, how many great episodes would you have missed? Right. Because, like, the fucking center card and the title wasn't, like, catchy enough. <laughs> I know. You know what I mean? Like, it's so true. Growing up, it was like, oh, Thursday night, like, Seinfeld's on. Yep. Didn't yeah. matter what the fucking episode was. Yeah. I was in. You know. <laughs> Imagine now? if they wrote every Seinfeld episode based on like comments. <laughs> yeah. There's no question mark on the title. <laughs> yeah. The soup Nazi. <laughs> is this soup? Uh, is so this soup chef a Nazi <laughs> question mark? Yeah. Well, now it's getting lots of clips. <laughs> That's totally what it would be too. Yeah. Uh, I know. You we're so you won't believe what this soup Nazi <laughs> serves. <laughs> I feel like, like we're so lucky to have have. have been fed in our prime <laughs> content that wasn't click necessarily click driven. driven. Elaine bought the cheapest <laughs> armoire available in town, and then it got stolen. Uh, oh my god! You could do a whole bit. By the way, you know that's the same episode. Is it the Holy Soup Nazi shit. and wow. the armoire are the same episode? Wow! 
Spike I've, wrote that. I would I would like to think that the internet is like coming to this m- maturation point where like w- w- we're not taking every comment to heart and like crying ourselves to sleep over it. But I yeah. could be wrong. I don't know. You know, I have a lot of folks who like ask me how to like get started, how to game the system. Yeah. Not how to game the system. Literally, like oh, okay. the like. I think people like don't understand or they need that kick to to like actually turn the camera on and say something into it. Like mm-hmm. they don't, they go, how do I start? And I go, you literally turn the camera on right. and then you press record and then you say or do something. <laughs> like yeah. I, and I'm not, and, you know, you, and they need to hear that. I'm not trying to be a dick. I know what they need to hear and that's it. Yeah. Like, oh, I understand. Like he got a cat, like how did Matt start? Okay. He got a camera. <laughs> Yeah. And he found something to point it at, and then he said or did something, and then he put it on, and I was literally like, like, what about Bob? Like, baby steps, (laughs) make a channel. Baby steps, buy a GoPro. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, yeah, totally. they need it. They need the the kick. Well, I I, I, uh, co-signed that. That's how I got started, man. It's a free WordPress blog. Start writing about cars. Here are my opinions about cars. How do I do it? Well, you start by doing it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's it, it might be trash and you right. throw it away, but you've right. done something, yeah. and then you can do something else. And yeah. you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, totally. How do you start? Well, you start. You start. <laughs> start by starting. Tim Post daily drives a 2008 Mustang GT GT all year in Massachusetts, 20 miles a year for the past four years. Jesus, <laughs> someone give this guy a fucking medal or a yeah, hug, wow. something. That's a lot uh, of miles. What are worthwhile handling mods considering winter driving? I have a good set of winter lots. tires. Uh, if uh, you don't have a limited slip differential, which I think, do all GTs have a limited slip differential? Prob- I don't know. Probably. Well, maybe not 08, yes, though. I don't know. Probably. I don't know if they all do. Uh, I wish I uh, knew that offhand. I know. That I might don't. have been a package. That might have been an option. I want to say GT probably had it. Or maybe like all the manuals had it, but autos yeah. didn't. Uh, that's but that's possible. a good one, though. But check if the- you don't have an LSD, that's probably where to start. I mean, brakes. You've already got tires. Um, maintenance. Keep your car up nice. It's getting up there in miles. Yeah. Make sure you don't you don't look for mods rather than health yeah. of the car. And look at the shocks and bushings. Catalog. If you're getting up to 80k on a stock suspension, yeah, maybe you could get a better set of shocks and upgrade. You know, upgrade your shocks with the when it's time. It's not necessarily winter specific, but not. maybe like a softer. Uh, it doesn't really make any sense. For tires. Wolfram. I mean, winter's just tires. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wiper blades and extra headlights, but that doesn't affect your handling. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean you could, you know, if you get an, if you have adjustable suspension, you could adjust it a little softer, yeah. I suppose. But yeah. it's, I don't know, you're gonna safari the shit. <laughs> like, uh, get no, to a I mean, if, you, if you've got decent. tires, you know, just make sure your car's tip top. Oh, you can put a Watts link on that thing, on the back. Mm. Keeps the uh, diff in place. Oh, that's huh. like a, kind of that an advanced mod. Advanced mod, but like, I don't know, it depends okay. on what you have. Huh. It, it well, keeps, you know, because OHGT so is a solid whatever. axle car, so. Right, right. Otherwise, it moves all over the place, so mm-hmm. Watson helps a lot with that. But 08 is at the newer end of it. I don't know at what one, point right? they started improving mm-hmm. the solid axle to where it... Well, I mean, Musso, he did a uh, pannered bar and uh, Watson true. Link on his 2011. It's just oh, like, yeah, it's just how far do you want to go? But like, yeah. start with, you know, springs you and shocks. You should also, shocks. Mr. Post, you should also experiment with changing the amount of weight in the trunk. Like, honestly, try some sandbags in there. And uh, see how that affects your handling. I mean, if I had a pickup truck, I'd be throwing weight in the back. And so, yeah. so got to imagine the concept is similar. I was always way too lazy to throw the weight in the car. Yeah, like, I mean. Uh, lugging sandbags. Fuck. Well, if he's asking about I bought it in his 57 Chevy truck for drag racing, and it did not really <laughs> help his time, but it was fun. Yeah. Well, it, it, it helped his ET, but hurt his top end. <laughs> I think it was just like helping get out of the hole a little bit, but that yeah. was his solution. And right. for rain driving, he's like, I just put, you know, 50-pound sandbags in the back. Yeah. Uh, and Von Hammerschmark would like to request a Get Spinelli, Spinelli back on the back. show. We should. It's been a couple, what, four or five couple months, months yeah, maybe. Yeah. I'm sure, he would love uh, to talk It's to you about guys. time the Spinelli w- came back around on the wheel of guests. <laughs> <laughs> we, Zach, should we make the, a wheel of regulars? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that idea. <laughs> Spin that shit. It's a great idea. <laughs> we should. I, I would think I would like to share the hotline with, like, we should share the link, the call in link. 
so that at any point during the live show, if they see we're live, they could go to that link. That would be funny. Can't we do that mm-hmm. with SwitcherCast? Yeah. We could just send out. Like on like on Howard Stern or whatever, like the f- celebs have the right. hotline. Right. You call in whenever. Right. That's so, what we should do. So like do. only certain people would have yeah. the number? Is that what it yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. Like friends <laughs> get the link. It's like, you yeah, know, okay. it's a private link. That's but like, cool. why is Spinelli in the chat That's and not true. on the program? <laughs> That's true. Can we text Spinelli a link right now? Can Spinelli get on the program call now? Call uh, I could put him on speaker. Is he still there? <laughs> I have to send him the new I don't link. Know. Oh, okay, whatever. I don't know still there. He might we should just plan this for later. We don't need. To, we don't need the pressure of doing this in the middle of the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like that is <laughs> the thing. We should, they should, we should have the hotline so that if you see that we're live, you can just boom, and then it goes to Zach. <laughs> then we can get you in the show in, in real time. Yeah, I like it. There it is. That was a show. We just did it. That was pretty solid. That was a whole show. That was a nice little show. Car Bibles. Right. I'm excited. I'm really, I appreciate that. Thanks for letting me come on. The timing was perfection. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm really, like over the weekend, I'm probably going to be messing with stuff and we'll be poking around. Over the next month, we'll be playing with fonts and whatever. It's have in beta. You, yeah, it's basically it's in not like you're telling people the cars drive themselves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, the site writes itself. <laughs> yeah, we are now looking for investors. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> you too. <Okay>. Yeah. <laughs> Life is good, but it could be better. No, yeah. I'm excited. That's awesome. I'm glad you look happy. You seem relieved Thanks, to be working for yourself mostly, or whatever. Yeah, you it's call really this, cool. It's uh, be the editor. Yeah, I mean, I'm still. Uh, I still. I answer to Patrick, George, now, and Mike, but uh, they're very on You're board with, with like that yeah, position. I, I know him well, <laughs> so yeah. I know it's so funny going like working for the same guy at two different companies. It's bizarre. Do you know how many times I've worked for JF? I've worked for JF like <laughs> nineteen different times for like Three all different networks, all, all different kinds networks. of different shit. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. That you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, but it's good. I, you know what I really hope if someone's out there who works at the channel Epics, can you do like a crime doc about Amol? That would really be fun. I just saw an ad come up for Epics before. Oh, the guy who robbed the guy who robbed <laughs> took all the money. I think there should be a crime doc about that. Sounds like an interesting story. Recommendation if you haven't seen it yet, okay. and everyone else out there. I'm really late to the. I'm really late on this one. I slept on it. Uh, Operation Odessa on oh, Netflix. I, no, I haven't seen it either. It's about the fucking Russians that were arranging to get Soviet military equipment to Pablo Escobar. Oh, my God. And the main guy's name is Tarzan. <laughs> and he acts like a crazy Russian gangster named Tarzan. Wow. And it's hilarious. Oh, you want submarine? I get you submarine. No problem. <laughs> I mean, it's a fucking hilarious. <laughs> I mean, it's it's, it's uh, like if you liked cocaine cowboys yeah, and that yeah. kind of crazy shit. Very cool. It's that. Okay. These guys, like right. when the Soviet Union collapsed, you could buy a submarine. Right. Of course. Oh, and it's like, like Lord of War. That movie. Yes. Though, right. Yeah. <laughs> good movie. It was yes, good movie. Yeah. Exactly that. <laughs> wow. Or, or uh, War Dogs as right. well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Carbibles.com. Yeah, man. We're on all the socials too. And uh, Carbibles on Instagram. Yep. Yep. Um, it's Twitter. Are you that. guys? Are you guys going to be doing unique Instagram content? Yeah. Yeah. We um, actually another ex Jalop alum, Steph Schrader, is oh. uh, works with this guy David Lee on our social stuff, and yeah. So the Twitter. And the Insta is going to be separate stuff. It's going to—it's not just going to be like here's what we blog today because uh, I think that's annoying when when sites do that. Yeah, it's like you got to mix it up. Um, but yeah, good, excellent. That's the scoop. Go follow them. Do Please we follow, do. do. We follow them, we Zach. Did you make, okay, nice. Great. Thanks, great. dude. And uh, Andrew at large. Andrew at large is my also Insta on the Instagrams. And I'm just Andrew P Collins on the Twits. Thank you all for listening. Yeah, thanks a lot. Really um, appreciate it. We have. Uh, not a show for a while. I might have to record Tony something Tony next Friday. Calling in. Tony yeah. Caroga of Car and right. Driver. Tony Caroga. Oh, nice. and, and I have to go to New York. You go to New York. Because I am doing my Haggerty show. Oh, cool. Which is coming in April. It's called Modified. It's on Haggerty's YouTube channel. Uh, uh, things I will be driving include the roof yellow bird. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm doing uh, an episode on car- carb legal engine swaps. Oh, you mentioned that. Yeah, Just that's a couple of those. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing an episode on unplugged performance, which does modified uh, Teslas. Ooh. They make the Model 3 go very, very fast. Cool. They built Pikes, the Pikes Peak cars, oh, and nice. they have a street okay. car package, too. Nice. It's batshit fast. <laughs> um, and uh, in New York, I'm doing uh, an episode on an Audi RS4 Safari. Oh, jeez. Built by. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Cool. Yeah. Uh, wow. B5 RS4 Safari. Huh. Uh, and then we've also got some other fun stuff that I don't necessarily want to say. Developed on the show yet. yet? Well, I'm really yeah. looking forward to that show. It's going to yeah, be kick yeah. ass. It's yeah. going to be very, very fun. Yeah. Um, so that'll be fun coming on Haggerty's thing. But in the meantime, uh, oh, shout out to Mazda oh, nice. for yeah. letting us have oh, a go in that good. CX9. I'm sorry we didn't make a video, but it's. 
That's a lovely right. little car. Yeah. And uh, thank you all for listening. We will see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>